ready? Okay. So will the meeting please come to order? Uh, today is May 21st, 2019. Welcome to the Metropolitan Council meeting. Uh, before we get to the, um, the invocation, um, I'd like to say that um, last week we lost one of Nashville's great leaders and public servants in Charlie Cardwell. He was Metro government's longest serving employee, serving for 60 years. <coughs> he started work for the city in 1958. He was appointed as a Metropolitan Trustee in 1993 and was elected six times after that. Mr. Cardwell symbolized what we want our leaders to be, dedicated, devoted, committed, accessible, talented, caring. His wonderful wife Marie died earlier this year. They both made Nashville a special place for all of us. We will miss both of them greatly. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and to the men and women of the trustee's office. If you would, please join me in a moment of silence in memory of our Metropolitan Trustee, Mr. Charlie Cardwell. Thank you. I would say at this point, um, in appropriate recognition of his service to Nashville and Davidson County, uh, Mr. Cardwell's body will lie in state in this courthouse tomorrow, Wednesday, tomorrow, from 9.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. His body will be received at 9.15 tomorrow morning in the parking lot next to the courthouse uh, in the area that um, we refer to as the horseshoe parking lot closest to the river next to the courthouse. Um, everyone is invited to pay their respects. One last point, Mr. Cardwell served his country as well as a member of the United States Navy. He was, uh, he was our friend. We really will miss him. Will all members of the council as well as the public please rise for the invocation Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation this evening will be offered by Reverend Dietra Bledsoe Coleman, who's the Associate Pastor of Christian Education at New Visions Baptist Church. Uh, she is a guest of Council Member at Large, Bob Mendes. May we present ourselves before Almighty God and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our servant leaders who are chosen to lead this rising city. Please pour out your spirit upon all men and women who have been given authority over us. Cause them to be persons of integrity and obedient to you, O oh God. As they make decisions tonight regarding the welfare of all aspects of this city, Turn their ears to wisdom, their hearts to understanding, and let knowledge be pleasant to their souls. Let discretion preserve them and deliver them from any bending to go astray. Protect them from the root of evil and let caution be their guide. Make their hearts and ears attentive to godly counsel, only doing what is right in your sight. Bring to light any hidden agendas set to profit a few and not to benefit the whole city. Let them remember where they have fallen short and in repentance. Hear their pleas as they return back to you, seeking you first. Please forgive their sins and heal Nashville. Raise the standard over them and cause them to leave a legacy of what is fair and just for all citizens of this great city. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. 
visible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting of May 7, 2019? I got a motion properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Mr. Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, any committee reports on matters other than legislation? Seeing none, um, then we have two presentations to start tonight. Um, Council Member Blaylock, I'm going to start with you. And you are recognized at the podium in the back. We're going to recognize David Ewing for 34 years of service. 24. Or 24 years. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> exactly. 24 years of service to boards and commissions. So that's like about a thousand hours or more. So if you guys want to come join me, that's great. Um, this resolution recognizes David Ewing for his service on the Metropolitan Nashville Board of Zoning Appeals. Whereas on February 26, 2019, the term of Board of Zoning Appeals member David Ewing will expire. Whereas Mr. Ewing was first appointed to the BZA in 2006 by Mayor Bill Purcell and was reappointed the two additional terms by Mayor Carl Dean and also served as chairman for a portion of his 13 years on the board. And whereas he previously served on the Metropolitan Historical Commission and the Metropolitan Historic Zoning Commission, making him one of the longest serving citizens in Metro's history. And whereas a ninth generation Nashvilleian, Mr. Ewing attended Peabody Demonstration School where attending undergraduate school at Connecticut College and later earning his Juris Doctorate degree from Vanderbilt University Law School. And whereas he has served as Director of Legal and Government Services for the Tennessee Higher Education Commission, Director of Government and Community Relations at Gaylord Entertainment Company, Senior Vice President of Government Relations and Community Improvement and the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce, as well as Finance Director for Jim Cooper for Congress, a lawyer with the firm Rudy Wood and Winstead, and a fellow at Montgomery Bell Academy. And I'm gonna let his current councilman finish off the rest. Thank you. It is <clears throat> with great pride we get to recognize a, a constituent so dedicated to public service. Uh, whereas Mr. Ewing is also a local historian, collector, and blogger who is known for his social media brand, the Nashville I Wish I Knew, and is CEO of Nashville History on Tour. And whereas Mr. Ewing has served on the board of dozens of civic organizations and businesses, including Cheekwood Museum of Art, the Parthenon, and the Hermitage. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognize Mr. Ewing for his dedication and many years of service to Nashville and thank him for his service to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing David Ewing for his service to the Metropolitan Nashville Board of Zoning Appeals. The Metropolitan Council Office is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution to be presented to David Ewing and this resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Thank you for this wonderful honor. I think we have a quorum back here, <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to thank the council for continuing to approve my appointments from previous mayors, including Mayor Bredesen, Mayor Purcell, Mayor Dean, and of course now Mayor Briley. And um, it is an honor to serve this city. And I just truly am dedicated to no matter what board I'm in. So thank you again. And thank you, Council Lady Blaylock, my councilman, Freddie O'Connell, for this honor.
that's part of it. Thank you for your vote and support. Thank you for your service, my friend. All right, while the quorum in the back is coming <laughs> this way, um, I will call on Council Member Weiner uh, for her presentation. Okay, I'm short, so. So, I'm not going to do an introduction because I think the nature of the resolution speaks to everything that I would like to share. A resolution honoring the service and conduct of Shannon Hodge, an employee of the General Sessions Court for Nashville and Davidson County, for discovering a large-scale fraud within the Nashville General Sessions Traffic School. Whereas, in July of 2018, Shannon Hodge, an employee of the General Sessions Court for Nashville and Davidson County, noticed that the revenue figures in Nashville General Sessions Traffic School appeared incorrect. And whereas, upon recognizing the discrepancies, Ms. Hodge began an arduous and painstaking review of traffic school receipts to determine the source of the discrepancies. And whereas eventually, through her research, Ms. Hodge determined that traffic school fees appeared to have been waived by General Sessions judges who were in fact no longer in office or on days during which the judge was not presiding according to docket schedules. And whereas, through her diligence and perseverance, Ms. Hodge discovered a pattern of waived fees averaging approximately $350 a day eventually determined to total over $100,000 in stolen fees over a six-year period. And whereas a high percentage of the waived fees were for minority or non-English speaking individuals who had paid cash for their fees. And whereas once the theft was detected, the proper authorities were informed and the employee responsible for the theft was charged and eventually pled guilty. And whereas Shannon Hodge conducted her research after hours during her own time when she could have been enjoying personal pursuits and her own time off. And whereas it is proper for the Metro Council to express its enormous gratitude to Shannon Hodge and to recognize the public service of an employee who went above and beyond the call of duty in discovering and reporting an insidious fraud within our justice system. So now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Metro Council hereby goes on record is honoring the outstanding service and dedication of Shannon Hodge in uncovering theft within Nashville General Sessions Traffic School. This resolution taking effect at, from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Everybody should stand and applaud this young lady. My name is Bob Green. I'm the director of the General Sessions Court Probation Department and the Traffic School, and I'm the new director of the Traffic School. Uh, Shannon defines integrity. Uh, she's a type of employee that this government and these taxpayers should be proud to have. Congratulations. We appreciate you. Thank you. speak next, but I'm Melissa Blackburn. I'm the presiding judge of the General Sessions Court, and I will have to say, she not only found this fraud, she found a subsequent fraud. And without Shannon's hard work, you have no idea how much money the Davidson County government would have lost. She is diligent, she's hardworking, and she's tenacious. And thank God we have employees like Shannon Hodge working for the Davidson County Courts. Council Parson Weiner was right on when she said that Shannon sacrificed a lot of her 
personal time because I'd heard she was married, I heard she had children, but when all this was going on, I noticed how much time she was literally spending there, and I had to do some reconfirms to verify she did have a family. So anyway, that does prove to you that she was very dedicated in finding the fraud, solving the fraud, and, and working with the local law enforcement authorities and, and federal authorities concerning this. Very impressive. Thank you all for being here. That's, like I said, very, very impressive. So we have um, one other matter uh, that we're going to deal with on presentations. Um, but uh, before I get there, um, I do um, have the responsibility to announce several vacancies. <coughs> and. Um, Obviously, um, the first vacancy is um, the vacancy in the office of the Metropolitan Trustee. Uh, this vacancy will be filled by the Metropolitan Council in accordance with state law under Article 7, Section 2 of the Tennessee Constitution and Tennessee Code Annotated, Section 8-11-101. A vacancy in the office of trustee is filled by the county legislative body until a successor is elected at the next regular August general election, as defined in the Tennessee Code. Metropolitan Trustee serves a four-year term. The current unexpired term begins September 1, 2018. The next general election is set to take place in August 2020, at which point an election to fill this vacancy would occur. The appointee selected by the council would serve until a successor is elected in the August 2020 election. Pursuant to the Council Rules of Procedure, nominations will be accepted from members of the Metropolitan Council, as well as from members of the general public, including candidates themselves. No second shall be required to place the name in nomination. All nominations must be in writing, signed by the person making the nomination, and filed with the Metropolitan Clerk no later than 4 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, May 28, 2019. Let me repeat that. All nominations must be in writing, signed by the person making the nomination, and filed with the Metropolitan Clerk no later than 4 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, May 28, 2019. Together with the written nomination, the person so nominated shall file with the Metropolitan Clerk no later than Friday, May 31, 2019, a resume and responses to a written questionnaire to be approved by the Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee which sets forth the nominee's willingness to serve if elected, complete name, place of residence, the length of time the person lived in Davidson County, professional or occupational experience, experience in public service, and other information that may be, may be required by law to ensure eligibility to serve. <coughs> Nominees will be notified to appear before the Council's Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee on Tuesday, June 18, 2019, and an election to fill the vacancy will be conducted at the council meeting on that night. Any nominee who fails to appear before the Rules Committee on June 18th will be deemed to have withdrawn his or her name from nomination. Um, one question before I go on to the next vacancy. Uh, Mr. Jamison, I know the Rules Committee uh, and Council Member Lee is here, was looking at the written questionnaire to be approved. Did they get that taken care of? Yes, sir. <coughs> I'm going to recognize Council Member Lee. Yes, we did. We looked at that and the committee approved it. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, sir. Any questions um, regarding uh, the announcement of the vacancy in the office of the Metropolitan Trustee? Okay. <clears throat> Seeing none, um, there is also a vacancy for the Council's Urban Council. Uh, notice is hereby given of a vacancy on the Metropolitan Council's Urban Council to be filled by the Metropolitan Council in accordance with the Charter of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Section 4.01 of the Charter provides that if less than three council members at large reside within the Urban Services District, they shall be members of the Urban Council 
together with other members selected by the Metropolitan Council from its own membership so as to constitute a three-member urban council. So I was the third member of the urban council, so now I don't count, so that's why we have to do this. <coughs> Some people don't think I count anyway, but I'm just explaining that. The Urban Council meets immediately following any meeting of the Metropolitan Council which an annual budget is adopted or amended or at which the annual tax rate for the General Services District is adopted or amended. The Urban Council's sole function is to levy a property tax adequate with other available funds to finance the debt for urban services. The terms of members of the Urban Council shall be coextensive with the term of the members of the Metropolitan Council. That's the only thing that this member does. Vacancies in the membership of the Urban Council are to be filled by the members of the Metropolitan Council, which shall elect one of its own uh, members for that position. Any council member whose district or portion thereof lies within the Urban Services District shall be eligible. Nominations will be accepted on the floor of the regular council meeting on June 4, 2019, whereupon an election will be conducted in accordance with the provisions of Rule 42 of the Council Rules of Procedure. Vacancy in the Urban Council must be filled no later than June 4, 2019. Are there any questions about that? Mr. Jamison, did I say all that correctly? You did. <clears throat> all right. So again, uh, we need a member of the council to fill that role. Anybody who um, is, uh, whose district is partially within the Urban Services District is eligible for nomination. We need someone to be able to sign um, the proper paperwork after the budget is passed and the tax levy is passed. All right, so I know that everybody's interested in doing this. We have to elect somebody. Uh, the last thing I have to announce is vacancies on Nashville and Eastern Rail Authority and Cheatham County Rail Authority. Notice is hereby given of vacancies on the Nashville and Eastern Rail Authority and the Cheatham County Rail Authority resulting from the expiring terms of our own council member Jeff Syracuse and Ed Cole, respectively, on June 6, 2019. Both vacancies are to be filled by the Metropolitan Council in accordance with state law. Under TCA Section 756-201, any municipality or county or combination of municipalities and counties may establish an authority to provide for the continuation of rail service within the area of the government's establishing the authority. Metropolitan government joined these railroad authorities in 1988. TCA section 756-203 provides that one member is to be selected by the governing body of each county and city that is a member of the authority. Each appointee serves a two-year term. Nominees must be at least 25 years of age. Council member Syracuse, did you get that? <clears throat> have resided within the boundaries of the authority for at least one year. Pursuant to the council rules of procedure, nominations will be accepted from members of the Metropolitan Council, as well as from members of the general public, including candidates themselves. All nominations must be in writing, signed by the person making the nomination, and filed with the Metropolitan Clerk no later than 4 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, May 28, 2019. Together with the written nomination, the person so nominated shall file with the Metropolitan Clerk a written statement setting forth his or her willingness to serve if elected, complete name, age, place of residence, the length of time the person has lived in Davidson County, a resume, and all other information which may be required by law. Nominees will be notified to, before the, to appear before the Council's Rules Confirmation of Public Elections Committee on Tuesday, June 4, 2019. And an election to fill the vacancy will be conducted at the council meeting on that night. Any nominee who fails to appear before the Rules Committee on June 4th will be deemed to have withdrawn his or her name from nomination. Any questions on that? I'm sorry that took so long, but those are vacancies that we had to announce. Um, any questions before we proceed ahead? Seeing none, I'm going to call on Council Member Freddie O'Connell for a presentation in the back. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> it is with some embarrassment, I guess, that we had a, a kind of delay of, of receipt of this. This was supposed to be available during the announcements period, and thank you for the, the grace to present this because Mr. Sconey is here tonight. So uh, we will be presenting a resolution recognizing Bob Sconey upon the occasion of his retirement for 42 years of service at Nashville Municipal Auditorium. So some 
wonderful opportunities this evening to recognize uh, extended periods of service. So I, I will read this through and then we will hand the microphone over to Mr. Sconey. Whereas Bob Sconey has served as an employee of Municipal Auditorium since 1977 and has served as general manager of the facility for the last 25 years, and whereas Sconey was fresh out of the University of Alabama when he started at Municipal Auditorium in 1977 at a time when the facility served as one of Nashville's only buildings to play to audience of, audiences of more than 9,000, and whereas Sconey joined Municipal Auditorium during its early heyday for concerts and political events and remembers moments from shows such as The Police, Queen, ACDC, The Jacksons, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Elton John, The Village People, The Charlie Daniels Band, Metallica, Foo Fighters, and Kesha. <laughs> And whereas the history of Municipal Auditorium can be seen on the exterior of the building, where a large mural of ticket stubs covers the wall just outside the main entrance, showcasing the many artists that played the venue, and whereas most of the tickets on display in the mural were preserved by Sconey, who began saving extras known as Deadwood in his desk drawer after every event starting in 1977. <laughs> And whereas once competition from other venues in the city arose with Bob Sconey's help, Municipal had to reinvent itself and move towards hockey and baseball, rodeos and circuses, and later became the home for heavy metal bands, then cheerleading conferences and religious assemblies in the 1990s. And whereas Sconey was tested with near constant upkeep of the aging facility and has preserved the best of the old, such as refurbishing the original 1962 seats while modernizing facilities like the performer dressing rooms and the public bathrooms. And whereas Sconey has said that when the lights go down, and the show goes on without a hitch, and the applause starts, that's my paycheck. And whereas upon retirement, Sconey will spend his time bass fishing, snow skiing, traveling, and having fun with his wife of 30 years, Lisa. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognizes and congratulates Bob Sconey upon his retirement and thanks him for his 42 years of service to Municipal Auditorium and the citizens of Nashville. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, the Metro Council hereby goes on record is recognizing Bob Sconey upon the occasion of his retirement for 42 years of service at Nashville Municipal Auditorium, and this resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Thank you, Mr. Sconey. Thank you. Thank you. How you got through that, how you got through that without a breath, thank you. But thank you all. Thank you very much for bestowing this honor upon me. It's It's been a great run of 42 years at the, here in Nashville. I came here. I love this city. This body is great to work with. You, I don't know how you all give your time to the city, and I know you're not doing it for the money, but you're doing it for the heart. And I really appreciated always that over the years. Your questions to me were always very good and fair, and I know you're just doing your job. But I had a lot of support also from my commission members. Uh, there's three of them here tonight. There's Perry DeGuard and Leah Armstrong and John Landers. And uh, they were always great. They were approved by your body. And uh, they were always very supportive. And also the great auditorium staff. I had nine people with, I worked with, and they helped me every day. Now, if without them, I wouldn't have been able to make it. Also, my family. I got, I got to thank my family because um, when I was became manager 25 years ago, we were starting to book some new types of smaller kids' events. My daughters would help me with Dick and Barney, Bob the Builder, uh, the Wiggles. You know, I didn't know who these groups were, but they did. So anyway, so they were always great. And my wife would always give me good sound legal and also management advice, and I couldn't have done it without her. So, I, and Rick Reno is now leading the pack over there, and he's going to do a fine job for us. And just hope to continue and, and support the auditorium. But thank you all very much. So, Mr. Sconey, you can't hear me. Mr. Sconey, as he's talking to um, lots of different people, Mr. Sconey, I just want to say thank you for a job well done. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, we're almost uh, getting ready to get to the agenda. I do have one other person I'd like to recognize in the back. Um, if Mr. John Rutherford would stand up, Mr. Rutherford. So uh, Mr. Rutherford um, uh, um, is the only name on the ballot in District 31 to replace Councilmember Fabian Bedney for that seat. 
So unless something else changes, Mr. Rutherford will be uh, possibly joining us next uh, term. And I just wanted to uh, introduce Mr. Rutherford. Welcome to the council chamber and uh, ask him to stay the whole time tonight. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. All right, we are now ready for elections and confirmations. I'm gonna to go to uh, uh, Chairperson Lee. Uh, there you go. Um, the committee appointed um, Ms. Casey Anderson to the Action Commission, six to zero. Uh, Mr. Hubbard to the Community Corrections Board, six to zero. Dr. Brown to the Community Education Commission, Six to zero. Um, we appointed uh, Ms. Abafrazi and Mr. Mohammed to the Human Relations Commission, six to zero. And we reappointed Mr. Gibson, uh, Reverend Tucker, um, Dr. Richmond, and Ms. Lisa, uh, Linda Robinson to the commission, six to zero. Uh, reappointed to the work release commission was um, Mr. Current III, six to zero. And zoning appeals, the appointment of Mr. Tom Lawless was deferred for two meetings. There were four voting for the deferment and two abstaining. All right, so That's we are. It, sir. Th thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So uh, we'll take them all at the same time with uh, the deferment of um, Mr. Lawless um, in terms of the Zoning Appeals Board. Uh, so we have a, a, a motion, Madam Chair. I, I do move. Okay, a motion, proper second for the, um, uh, the election of, uh, of all these individuals. Let me go over their names. Uh, Ms. Casey Anderson for the Action Commission, uh, Benjamin Hubbard for the Community Corrections Advisory Board, Dr. Catherine Brown for the Community Education Commission, uh, Miriam Alba -Fosley, Fosley for the Human Relations Commission, Jeff Gibbs Gibson for the Human Relations Commission, Issa Yusuf Mohammed, Reverend Davy Tucker, Dr. Marissa Richmond, and Ms. Linda Robinson for the Human Relations Commission, and Patrick Curran, uh, the third for the Work, work Release Commission. Um, those are the individuals we will be approving tonight. I hope I didn't mess up your names too badly. Um, so the motion and the second is to approve all those. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Um, Deferral, it's an automatic deferral, two meetings. So Mr. Lawless is deferred two meetings by rule. So if you would, uh, if you would stand up as I call your name, uh, Ms. Casey Anderson for the Action Commission, Mr. Benjamin Hubbard for the Community Corrections Advisory Board, Dr. Catherine Brown for the Community Education Commission, all these individuals for the Human Relations Commission, Ms. Miriam Albel fosley Mr. Jeff Gibson, Mr. Isa Yusuf Mohammed, Reverend Davy Tucker, Dr. Marissa Richmond, Ms. Linda Robinson, all those for the Human Relations Commission, and Mr. Patrick Curran for the Work Release Commission. I got them all. On behalf of the entire Metro Council, we thank you for your willingness to serve and to volunteer your time and expertise. We appreciate your service. Thank you. And you all are welcome to stay. We're guessing we may be here until 11 o'clock. Oh, there they all go. They're all taken off. <clears throat> I think Mr. Rutherford tried to sneak off with them as well. All right, we're now uh, ready for the public comment period. Uh, this is the time that's dedicated to allow members of the public who have registered in advance to speak on matters related to the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County community. Um, we have a group of, I believe, 
nine individuals that have signed up. I will call you up. Uh, you will have um, two minutes to speak. We ask you to respect um, the, uh, the time and also to respect our proceedings. Um, I will call you up again one at a time. The first person we have tonight is Regina Davis out of Councilman uh, Jonathan Hall's district um, from Buena Vista Pike. Ms. Davis, if you will come forward, the microphone is yours. Good evening. I am a member of NOAA's and I uh, serve on the Affordable Housing Task Force. 1,000 net new housing units for very low income people in 10 years, a 39 unit development for homeless veterans. It is clear that we're being offered a very shaky hope for the future. <laughs> Profound sadness and frustration are beginnings. But what do we do with those? Anger, grief, justice that embraces all. I've heard that an English word, anger, comes from the nos word, A-N-G-R, which actually means grief. That's why people in Nashville were angry over the loss of those cherry trees. It was significantly in indicative of the grief over the present direction our city seems to be headed. That's why we are angry that people of modest means are being pushed out of our county. We are grieving the loss of even the possibility of having a just city that values everyone. It's long-term residents who've been here way before Metro became a metropolitan government. It's new ones and people of all income levels. In short, we ought to express sadness and frustration because lives are at stake. But by themselves, they lead to inaction. It's okay to be angry and insist that the shaky hope we have been offered by a mayor must turn into something concrete beginning this year. To paraphrase a statement by Martin Luther King Jr. made in one of his letters from the Birmingham jail in 1963. Ms. Davis, we'll need to get that quick paraphrase before I cut you off. Okay, now is the time to lift our policy from the quicksand of injustice to the solid rock of human dignity. The mayor and the council are indeed and can make a solid beginning if you choose to. Thank you. For our next individual, next individual is Kim Wright. Uh, she is a, a constituent of council member Ed Kendall. Uh, Ms. Wright is from 1819 Cephas Street. Uh, Ms. Wright, you are recognized. Thank you. You may want to pull your microphone down. There you go. Okay. Um, dear Metro Council members, thanks for the opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, to speak this evening. I'm a single mom raising three young men, twins age of 11 and a 14 year old. I do live at 1819 Cephas, which is a block north of Buchanan Street in the heart of North Nashville. About three years ago, I chose to volunteer with NOAA's Affordable Housing Task Force. I never imagined that the housing development would so directly impact my own street. In the last year, at least six new houses have been built on my block and over 20 in the five block radius. If the house I rent was not owned by a nonprofit, I'm quite sure that my boys and I would have been displaced by now. I have learned an awful lot about housing policies over the last year and appreciate the efforts many of you have made. However, 
there are hundreds and thousands of people like myself being priced out of the neighborhoods. The latest plan from the mayor proposed an increase of 100 units for people like myself each year starting in 2020. Over 100 people a year die on the streets of Nashville. Maybe housing wouldn't have saved them. However, affordable housing would be a nice start. I know because I've been homeless. I've lived in the shelters, and if it wasn't for the nonprofit and government subsidies, I wouldn't be able to rent the house that I live in now. I know that we're giving big new companies $500 per employee. I work at a truck stop on an overnight shift four nights a week, and I wonder if my company got that incentive. Please remember me, remember us, the thousand that are being pushed out, and I would like to stay in my neighborhood in the future, but the way things are headed, I will be pushed out. Please find more money for affordable housing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Our next speaker is, um, our next speaker is Ryan Jeans, um, constituent of Council Member Freddie O'Connell sure. in District 19, 555 Church Street. Mr. Jeans, you're recognized. Thank you, Council. Uh, I'd like to address the mayor's proposal to turn over the city's resources to, uh, regarding our parking spaces and our ability to rent them to private enterprise. So regarding the current budget shortfall, it seems to me that there's a lot of blame to go around. I tried to read a little bit on it, didn't get totally down into it, but did the city fail to raise property taxes when they should? Probably. For a lot of Nashvilleians, it's really hard to look at all this prosperity around us and uh, be told that we have a budget shortfall. So that's just at a glance, it looks like somebody's not paying their fair share, and it doesn't seem to be like it's teachers, firefighters, and police officers. So what we're getting is the message, hey, sorry, we, can, we wish we would give you a small raise here, but we can't do that because uh, we're out of money. So the city uh, says we need some money and told that the solution is to sell off city re resources. Now, maybe this is an amazing deal, this parking deal, and maybe we citizens just don't see it. So if that's true, it's awfully odd. The diversity of people that I know living here in the district that are against this, I'm talking from liberals, conservatives, you have the uh, the owner of Tootsie's just recently saying that this is a bad deal. So uh, let me direct you to Chicago. So in 2008, Chicago had a small budget shortfall and did what you're proposing to do, give up control of their parking system for 75 years. So where's Chicago now? They have to now give money to a private company when the city does what any city has a right to do, uh, rent, use their space for what they want to use it for. So now Chicago pays every time they want to do a 5K run, every time there's a festival, they have to pay a private company for the opportunity opportunity to use their own resources, which I find completely unfair. So imagine our city taxes going up to pay for uh, LAZ parking. They're not even from Nashville. They're actually from Atlanta. Do they really have Nashvilleans' best interests at heart? Uh, I don't know. I don't think they live here. And, you know, the owner of Tootsie's, his main thing is local first, which is an interesting proposal. I generally agree with that. So I'm going to skip to the end. Uh, the city's proposing $325 million that we're going to get over 30 years. Uh, sounds great. But until you realize that that's over a 30-year period where we don't have control over our own resources. So they own us. We get $34 million up front. That solves the, the budget shortfall, but at what cost? We're, we're going to give them 50% of the revenue. And I just, as a Nashvilleian living downtown, I don't see that as fair. So if you want to know what this looks like to me, it looks like a loan shark deal, where a loan shark turns to you and says, hey, I'm going to give you 300 bucks, but down the line, uh, the Mr. cost James, is I'm have to a lot larger. So please reconsider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, members of the audience, we have a limited time for this, so we're trying to go through. I always hate to bang the gavel. Uh, I appreciate you all being here, but we're trying to get through this group. Um, Jason Carney is next. Council Member Brenda Haywood, District 3, 4921 Indian Summer Drive. Mr. Carney, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> it's my first time addressing the council, so I want to thank you for the opportunity. I'm here in support of the uh, energy bill package that is championed by Councilmember O'Connell and as well as many of you who are co-sponsors. Uh, I want to talk about some of the, the facts of renewable energy and its importance and significance. If you did not know, enough solar energy falls on the, falls from the sky in one hour to power the planet for an entire year. Something to really think about, about a, as far as a resource. 
uh, that does not create pollution. 97% of the scientific community believe that climate change is real and it is man-made. We are the ones creating the problems. The IPCC Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change gives us less than 12 years to act before catastrophic disasters significantly worsen. The more renew renewable energy we use, the less pollution we put in the sky. And that's not uh, just hearsay. Even today, NPR had a story uh, that talked about the uh, JAMA, the Journal of uh, American Medical Association, has uh, identified a direct link to a direct, an indirect proportion of reducing pollution and also reducing asthma uh, in young children, almost direct proportionality. Uh, renewable energy, especially solar power, is an economic powerhouse. It can create jobs, uh, no pun intended on the powerhouse. Installing solar locally will create good jobs. Uh, now, uh, I, am, uh, I, I work with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. Uh, I um, am also the president of the Tennessee Solar Energy Association and have a small business uh, in, this, uh, in this area. But uh, the utilities, the powers that be, don't want small businesses in solar. So they've de-incentivized, they've disincentivized uh, the ability to create business and markets around this. I don't think that they should have the right to create the market. You can have the power to create this market. And I think that uh, this is the beginning. It's foundational, your vote today and hopefully a third vote to support this and then equitable implementation. Thank you. And Mr. Schumann, thank you for coming to Weiss Creek. Thank you, Mr. Carney. Next in. <laughs> So obviously no one pays any attention to me. Um, in order to get through this, we just need to keep going. We understand that this is important to the people in the audience, but we're trying to hear from as many people as possible. Uh, the next individual is Paul Slintz, uh, also from Council Member Brenda Haywood's district, 4016 Devonshire Drive. Mr. Slintz, you're recognized. All right, now all the applause went to Jason, so. <laughs> Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members. My name is Paul Slens. I'm a United Methodist pastor and president of Tennessee Interfaith Power and Light, a faith-based coalition of 48 congregations focused on combating the climate crisis, and it is a crisis. We are asking your, you to support the three carbon zero bills that are up for second reading this evening. What is at stake? As Mr. Carney said, climate change is real. It is not some distant threat. It is happening now and it is already having lethal consequences. Witness the hurricanes and wildfires that have grown in size and intensity over the last few years, resulting in the deaths of thousands of people in Puerto Rico, the mainland United States, and throughout the world. Scientists have told us the cause of climate change, heat trapping, heat trapping human-generated greenhouse gases that have been building up in the atmosphere for over the past 100 plus years from burning fossil fuels. Just last month, it was reported by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere had reached levels not seen in three million years. Climatologists have warned us that if action is not taken with great urgency, that consequences will be catastrophic for the whole planet. With increasing extreme weather patterns, severe drought, rising sea levels, and life-supporting ecosystems being thrown out of balance. And they have said what must be done. Humanity must collectively take rapid steps to deeply reduce greenhouse gas emissions, especially carbon dioxide. Everyone must do their part, from individuals to corporations to governments at all levels. And so, for the sake of this planet and all who share this common home, especially the poor who are hit first and hardest and have the least ability to recover, and our children and our grandchildren, we ask you to lead Nashville in doing its best in addressing one of the biggest, biggest moral challenges of our time. Please vote yes for these bills. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she's, at least the audience response is not as loud as it was last time. All right, so we're getting better. Uh, Jackie Sims. Um, she is a constituent of uh, Council Member Ed Kendall, 1813 Pearl Street. Ms. Sims. Thank you. Um, environmental 
Green and sustainable issues are probably the topics I've spent the most time on since I've been here in the city of Nashville um, on the board of Tennessee Alliance for Progress. Um, I'm here to stress the one king key dimension of sustainability that is underappreciated, and that's equity, which is at the core of so much. All the issues I am continuously railing against are intersectional, intersectional housing, public education, mass incarceration, economic development, and the list goes on. All issues of equity and justice. Tonight, it is the lack of attention paid to communities of color, especially, especially on sustainability. In our communities, there is sometimes uh, poor air quality, higher arbor, uh, carbon emissions, um, inadequate green space, higher rates of asthma with our children, lower birth rates. We have less safe streets, not enough sidewalks, bypass, uh, grocery stores with healthy fresh fruits and vegetables, too many food deserts. Last, there are countless persons due to poor uh, quality of housing without retrofitting who pay rates to heat and cool their homes often higher than the actual rent. I really don't think I'm telling you anything that you don't already know. Um, so my question to you as elected officials um, is what is your commitment to help address real quality of life issues, especially um, in communities that um, house the least of them? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sims. Our next individual is uh, Ryan Burke, uh, constituent of Council Member Anthony Davis in District 7, 1035 Chester Avenue. Hello everyone, I am a millennial concerned about climate change. Um, hey guys, so I came to Nashville from Pensacola, Florida in 2012 and in May of 2016, I received a degree in biomedical engineering from Vanderbilt. And while I was proud to earn that degree and to challenge myself in an important discipline, at the end of the day, engineers are problem solvers. I cannot ignore a problem that I think outweighs any, and I mean any other issue in our local and national discourse. So at 22, I decided that reducing the impact we have on our environment was my top priority. I can come back to bio biomedical engineering later if I'm called to it. After all, our community's health will depend on how well Mother Earth can support our way of life. Now, it's not only that emitting greenhouse gases will present obstacles to our future standard of living, but historically and currently, our political and economic structure is intertwined with the way communities of color bear the brunt of industry pollution. The downstream consequences of that pollution, the downstream consequences that pollution has on young children and these communities last a lifetime. We are overdue to make positive steps forward. I'm here with the Sunrise Movement Hub of Nashville and we share goals of fighting for an equitable and sustainable future. We are here in solidarity with others who aim to build a city and nation that breaks its unhealthy dependence on fossil fuels. We stand with Freddie O'Connell on setting ambitious goals to reduce our local environmental impact and I want our government to lead in this effort. Let's make investments in a cleaner, greener future. Now lastly, in your mind, I want you to paint a picture of Nashville 20 years from now. Will we attract those who wish to learn from Nashville's brilliant and sustainable urban design as much as we attract those who wish to celebrate their bachelorette weekend? <laughs> Will we be remembered as a city that supports a just future for its distressed communities as much as we are remembered for country music? The future is in our hands. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next individual is Carolina Sears, a constituent of uh, Council Member Kathleen Murphy, District 24, 4141 Woodlawn Drive. Ms. Sears. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members, and fellow citizens of Nashville. My name is Carolina Sears, a community organizer from Climate Nashville. I'm here to ask that you support the three zero carbon bills that are up for a second reading tonight. According to the UN, we have 12 years from now to limit climate change catastrophe. A few of my fellow citizens have told you about its impact on our environment, which will include rising temperatures, floods, and risk of drought. But I'm here to talk about the health effects, since it is a big concern of mine. I suffer from severe persistent asthma, which has been at its worst since I've, um, since I've ever seen since moving to Nashville in 2017. It took about two years with the help of doctors at Vanderbilt to get me to the point where I could go outside and not suffer an urgent care visit when the air quality index is moderate, which it is actually today. 
A part of um, this suffering is due to the horrible allergies in Nashville, but it is also due to the air quality during the spring and summer, as I live right next to one of the high traffic streets in town, West End Avenue. I have some data to back up Nashville's declining air quality trend. The 2018 American Lung Association State of the Air ranked Nashville as the 62nd most polluted city in the nation for ozone. This might not sound so bad, but considering that we were previously 93rd in 2017 and higher in previous years, the American Lung Association has seen this worsening trend occur in cities across our country and attribute it to climate change. They urge that we need to act now, and I agree. I've heard so many times since I've moved here that Nashville is the it city, the place that so many people want to live in. But we cannot continue this growth as is current paced without detriment to our collective health and our environment. So I truly believe that the government needs to lead on this and they, we need to set a new standard to promote clean air. And they have a chance to do that today with these three zero carbon bills. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sears. And our last individual tonight is uh, Thomas Acapinti, um, constituent of Council Member Russ Pulley in District 25, 1813 Pearl Street. Mr. Acapinti, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable uh, Jim Shulman and uh, Councilman Pulley and the, your esteemed colleagues and our citizens. Uh, I am Tom Acapinti. I'm going to raise this a bit. <clears throat> I'm here to speak with you because I was concerned after hearing that Mayor Briley was proposing a increase in short-term rental occupants, Airbnb hosts, from $50 to $314. That proposal came on May 5th. I don't know where that is exactly now, but I am concerned with a 600% increase. I'm also concerned with a 3% increase as a teacher because in a unique position, my wife and I are both not only hosts, Airbnb hosts, but we're Metro school teachers with 52 years of experience between us. Now, we bought our house in Green Hills back in 1984. We raised two kids there. I wrote notes, but I'm just going to speak to you. Um, our kids were Metro school students, University of Tennessee graduates, Western Kentucky graduates. They made a decision to live here with a business degree and start families. They earned more than their mother and I, and we're proud of that. They asked me tonight, well, Dad, what's your hope? What are you planning on doing? I said, I'm going to pl plan to ask people to listen. Listen to the people who are actually doing this, teachers and hosts. I thought of no other better way than to invite somebody like Mayor Briley and you all to visit our Airbnb, have a cup of coffee with my wife and I, learn about the challenges that we have as Airbnb hosts, which we are five-star guest hosts, and highly qualified teachers. Listen to what we have to say about Metro Schools, Listen to what we have to say about being hosts. And I think you would see that the 3% should go to raising the permits, and that 600% that Mayor Bradley is speaking of should go to teacher salaries. In closing, Airbnb hosts like my wife and I are ambassadors to our city, but as teachers, we are guardians of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Akapenti. All right, so that concludes the public comment period. We very much appreciate people being here and speaking. Uh, we are now ready to move to resolutions on public hearing. Um, so the way this works is uh, I will call on the sponsor. Uh, the sponsor will then call for a public hearing. I will ask them for a show of hands of those people who are here in favor of the measure. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, if anybody who is here in favor wishes to speak, you'll be invited to come up to the podium in the back. After those in favor speak, I will ask if anybody is opposed. Uh, they are allowed to speak. Uh, if you do speak, please start by introducing yourself. Where you reside, you will then have three minutes to speak. Uh, the first measure up on resolutions on public hearing, Resolution RS 2019-1727 by Council Member Withers. Uh, exempts Chopper LLC located at 1100 B and C Stratton Avenue from the minimum distance requirement for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Withers, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? Yes, you can. <clears throat> Council Member Roberts, you got that one? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With 100% attendance at public safety today, 100%. Very good. First time, eight years, four years. 
We voted seven in favor and zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Hey, okay, I'm gonna open up the public hearing. Could I have a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this resolution? All right, thank you. Those who are here opposed to the resolution. So we have people on both sides. Uh, those in favor wish to speak, if you would come forward. And again, if you will state your name and address, and then you have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mike Wolf, uh, co-owner, GM of Chopper. Thank you to Councilman Withers. Um, I need an address if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in uh, Inglewood, our, the address of Chopper, uh, 1100B Stratton Avenue. All right, thank you. And um, we are a very art forward space. Uh, we are finishing up our build currently. Um, our focus is, we are Tiki Bar, we're, our focus is tropical drinks. Beer is not necessarily our focus. We plan on having uh, two beers, and one of which is a, a collaboration with a local brewery, Southern Grist. Um, the design of our space was all done by uh, Nashville artists, particularly Bryce McLeod of Isle of Printing, whose work is all over Nashville. And uh, to, if I could alleviate any concerns that the neighborhood might have, our hours are going to be uh, not quite as late as many of the bars around uh, East Nashville and Lachlan Springs, the Five Points. We will close at midnight, Sunday through Thursday, uh, one o'clock Friday and Saturday, uh, much earlier than the bars uh, surrounding that area. And this is because it takes a lot of time and, and effort to prep for these drinks and to um, work through our service. So we will be closing earlier than normal than a lot of these bars uh, for the betterment of our staff and um, the neighborhood in general. There's been some concern about parking, but we have uh, many of the businesses in that area and, and in that complex close at around five and so there's a lot of about 35 spots that opens up uh, for us uh, after 5.30. So parking for the neighborhood should not be as much of a concern. And um, I, I did wanna mention that. Um, so thank you to Councilman Withers and um, I appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? If you would come forward. All right, seeing none, those who are opposed, if you wish to speak, if you would come forward. And if you would go ahead and line up um, just next to the podium so we can hear from you. Again, uh, name and address, and um, you got three minutes. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Bennett. I live at 1112 Stratton, uh, just a few houses down from where Chopper is going in. and. While I'm a big fan of, of business, and I'm a big fan of business in our community, and uh, I recently moved to East Nashville and chose this specific location because I really enjoy the mix, the urban feel, the mix of, of business, residential, uh, being someone who enjoys that type of lifestyle, my family and I are, are, are enjoying it very much. I have a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old who also very much enjoy our part of the city. Uh, when, I, when I became aware of what was developing at Chopper, uh, when I first saw it, I was actually very excited to see it uh, and see it come to be. And then I, then I found out about some of the progressions that are happening with the beer license. And uh, I would say that I'm in favor of keeping things as they are. I feel like the, the policies that are in place are wise to keep certain distance between uh, a, a beer establishment and residences. Uh, as a father of two children as well, and what I like about my neighborhood, I would prefer that to stay as it is. And uh, especially as I would, I, was, I would find empathy with some of my neighbors that live closer to it, uh, with the impact that that would have on their property. Uh, and me even being four to five houses down, even though it's not as extreme, uh, if I were living closer, I would be even more concerned about it. And so to, uh, to sum it up here, uh, I would say that uh, I'm excited about Chopper going in. I'm not excited about their beer license. Um, I would support them without it. Um, and I would hope that we would not see the beer license go into, um, 
activation for them. So that's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Williams. Thanks so much. Uh, and thanks for three minutes. I thought I was only going to get two. Uh, I live at 1104 Stratton Avenue. My residence is one of those that's within the 100-foot exclusion zone for this license. I'm zero feet from their parking lot. Chopper's located in one of several storefronts on the commercial building that wraps around Gallatin and then Stratton. It turns on Stratton. The Gallatin side's obviously on the Gallatin corridor. The Lachlan Springs historic overlay starts almost immediately on Stratton. There's my residence, and then 1106 Stratton. In this historic zone, that's where it starts, at 1106. So that structure is also in the historic zone and in the exclusion zone. Uh, that's why they need to get an exemption for this. They're bumping up against the residential zone. Had they chosen a location on Gallatin, this wouldn't be an issue. There's no shortage of leases on the Gallatin corridor that you can get a beer license. Chopper's partially replacing a business that was called Bar Luca. It was a small wine bar and was only one storefront. Uh, they didn't have a, uh, a beer license. And they did not impact on the community. Uh, Chopper is bigger. It will be a destination. Uh, it's going to be like Barista Parlor, where people are going to want to show up, buy an expensive drink, and that's OK, and get their Instagram photo, and then move to one of the other two tiki bars in the neighborhood. And that's OK. I'm just like my neighbor Joe. That's a great idea. What's wrong with the beer license? They're going to stay longer. <laughs> they're going to take our parking longer. At night, they're going to be dropping uh, litter longer. They're going to be making noise getting to their cars. All those are things that you can imagine. What I don't like is the precedent. If Chopper changes hands and they want to have a much more high volume beer place there, Chopper got it. Let's say that Barista Parlor changes hands and a, beer, and, a, and a brew pub wants to move in. They can do that too. Chopper got it. Uh, these precedents are dangerous. Uh, we have this rule regarding a beer license in your residences for a reason. Members of this council, imagine for a moment that you're being asked to give an exemption for a beer license or a beer joint adjacent to your home when it's not necessary. To, uh, there's no shortage of places that conform to the law. I have a really other question that's really specific. Have they done any research for in our area where they have given exemptions for a, lick, uh, a beer license, where it is budding not only residential uh, sites on the side street, but also budding up to the historic overlay on the side street? Is there any precedent for that? And is it really worth creating this precedent? I don't think it is. I'm happy to have them there. I don't think they should have a beer license. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Anybody wish, else wish to speak? Okay. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Weathers, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. And I really thank everyone for coming out today. I know I've heard um, some comments uh, from neighbors, particularly in the last uh, day or two, um, with some concerns about this. And I uh, feel um, what I would like to do today, actually, is to, what I'd like to do is to close the public hearing uh, and to defer this one meeting so that I can have a community meeting. And then I'll, after that motion, I'll make a brief comment, if that's okay. All right. So I've got a motion to defer one meeting properly seconded. Uh, back to you before you vote. Thank you again so much, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. But I've, I've heard from neighbors in the last couple of days in particular, um, and I know that some neighbors are potentially up. Uh, upset about the prospect of having beer being sold. Uh, I would like to address a few things. Um, this property is not in the conservation overlay. Um, there are other uh, applications, including most recently for donut distillery that came before this body had uh, for a beer permit. I would not necessarily classify donut distillery as a beer joint. Um, it is a commercial property, just like this one is, on a, cor on a cor corner, just like this one is. It does abut against a, a conservation overlay, just like this one somewhat does. Uh, I'm not necessarily aware that that has created um, uh, some of the, the issues that neighbors have raised. I think the, con the concerns that neighbors have raised are, are, are concerns. However, 
uh, I wanted to make sure that we went ahead with a public hearing today, in particular so that the applicants themselves could explain to everyone on the record in this forum uh, what, what they're hoping to do, which is to um, be able to add a very, very limited number of craft beer uh, selections to their menu. Um, and um, to the concern as well, which I understand about parking, this facility does have a parking lot. Um, to the concern about precedent, if this were to change hands, a fresh uh, resolution would have to be heard. It's a separate permit if it changes hands or even if it um, adds feet. It has a separate hearing before the beer board. So I understand why folks have that concern, but I just wanted to allay that concern. If this business adds feet where they want to sell um, beer, they have to go before the beer board for a fresh hearing, which is a public hearing at the beer board. Um, if they change hands, they definitely have to do all of the above. And the granting of this permit does not set a precedent. Um, having said all of that, what I would like to do again is to defer it and just make sure that we can, you know, get some, uh, I guess, get some accurate information out to neighbors who, who do have concerns that I think are legitimate uh, and see if to what extent we can allay uh, at least some of those concerns for, for uh, some of the neighbors who have uh, written and texted and things like that. So I would like to renew my motion to defer one meeting, please. I have a motion to defer one meeting. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. It is deferred one meeting. Uh, we're now on resolution RS 2019-1728 by Council Member Hager. Exempts five string garage located at 700 Hadley Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Hager, you are recognized. Vice Report. There you go. I got a committee report. Council Member Roberts, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The public safety deferred by rule. Deferred. And thank you. Okay. Um, Council Member Hager. I was here, so I'm asking to suspend the rules because this is already set for a public hearing, and that's what I'm asking everybody to allow me to do. I assume we can do that. All right. Um, Anybody have any objection? You've got Council Member Hager asking to suspend the rules. Anybody have an objection to the suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Council Member Hager, you are recognized on your resolution. Thank you so much. And all the council members, can I open the public hearing, please? Uh -huh. Declare the public hearing open. Uh, I need a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this resolution. Okay, I see you all way in the back. Uh, show of hands of those who are in opposition to this uh, resolution. Seeing nobody in opposition, anybody in favor wish to speak? Want me to? <laughs> I, can wait. I can save your time. Uh, so uh, people are welcome to speak, but if you don't want to, that's okay too. Well, seeing, seeing nobody up, uh, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hager, you're recognized. Move for passage with a comment. All right, so I got a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. Council Member Hager, back to you. This, this is Five Strings Cafe. Over the last 15 years, this was a uh, dilapidated filling station repair shop that was kind of an eyesore in the Old Hickory Village area. And this young lady's come in here along for her parents, and she's turned it into a jewel and we're pleased to have her there, and I haven't heard anybody email or contact me otherwise about what she's done to this place, and we're very glad, glad to have her there, and she has uh, turned this place into a, a great destination for the people walking around in the village and other people as well. So I move for passage, and I thank you. All right. Uh, I've got a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Hager. Uh, that concludes um, our resolutions on public hearing. We are now on the consent agenda. Um, so I'm going to go through and um, read off the resolutions that are on the consent agenda. Let me know if I miss something or if something needs to be bumped. Again, these are the measures on the consent agenda. I'm going to start with resolution RS 2019. 1729, 1730, 1731, 1732, 1733, 1734, 1736, 1737, 1738, 1739, 1740, 1741, 1742, 
1744, 1745, 1746, 1747, 48, 49, 50, and 51. Uh, anything that I missed? Anything that needs to come off the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, then I'm going to go through and read the captions of the measures on uh, the consent agenda. We're going to start with Resolution RS 2019 1729 by Virtue. Proves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Children's Services to the Davidson County Juvenile Court for a safe baby court to serve at risk children. Uh, 2019 1730, Virtue approves a grant from the National League of Cities to the Office of the Mayor to participate in the city's addressing fines and fees equitably, equitably project to develop equitable solutions strategies. Resolution RS 2019-1731 by Virtue approves a grant from PFM Group Consulting LLC to the Office of the Mayor to provide technical assistance to counties seeking to reduce or eliminate the, the, the reliance excuse me, on fines and fees collected by or through the criminal justice system while assessing the revenue and cost impact of the current system. Resolution RS 2019-1732 by Virtue approves an amendment to a grant from the Annie E. Casey Foundation to the Mayor's Office to provide a culturally appropriate and significant community engagement plan and strategy for North Nashville's equitable economic development. Resolution RS 2019-1733 authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Jermaine Jacob against Metro Government in the amount of $20,000. Resolution RS 2019-1734 by Virtue authorized the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Patty Thomas against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $13,000. Uh, resolution RS 2019-1735, hold on just a second. Thir 1735 is not on the uh, consent agenda, excuse me. RS 2019-1736 by Virtue in Syracuse, approves a grant from the Tennessee Li State Library and Archives to the Nashville Public Library to provide access to and circulation of special materials formatted for individuals who are hearing impaired. RS 2019-1737 by O'Connell, Hurt, and Gilmore appropriates $850,000 in community development block grant funds to assist with construction of Phase 1 of Jefferson Street Park to be located at 1606 Jefferson Street in North Nashville. Resolution RS 2019-1738 by Murphy, Bedney, and Syracuse approves an intergovernmental license agreement with the Tennessee Department of Transportation for the benefit of the Board of Parks and Recreation in the construction and maintenance of a pedestrian greenway. RS 2019-1739 by Virtue and Roberts approves a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Metro Nashville Fire Department to purchase a tent and includes trailer both with HVAC for large-scale events. Resolution RS 2019-1740 by Virtue and Roberts approves a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Metro Nashville Fire Department to provide suicide prevention training for seven staff members. RS 2019-1741 by Virtue and Roberts approves a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Metro Nashville Fire Department to fund the purchase of wireless connectivity with the Ambu bus. Resolution RS 2019-1742 by Virtue and Roberts approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security to the Metro Nashville Police Department for specialized motorcycle enforcement to reduce the rate of fatal and serious injury motorcycle crashes on Tennessee roadways. RS 2019-1744 by O'Connell, Bedney, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the D Department of Public Works for a general maintenance agreement for I-440 and from I-40 to I-24. Resolution RS 2019-1745 by O'Connell and Bedney approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metro Department of Public Works for a general maintenance agreement for various intersection improvements at SR6 and Church Street. Resolution RS 2019-1746 by Pride Moore and Rosenberg recognizes former Deputy District Attorney Tom Thurman for his many years of service to Nashville and Davidson County upon the occasion of his retirement. Resolution RS 2019-1747 by Dow, O'Connell, and others recognizes the Boys and Girls Club of Tennessee's 2019 Youth of the Year recipient, Zipporah Hunter Davis. Resolution RS 2019-1748 by Councilmember Allen recognizes Vanderbilt Lifelight 
on their 35th anniversary of providing services to Tennessee. Resolution RS 2019-1749 by Council Member Murphy recognizes Cumberland Gallery's 39 years of visual art exhibitions in Nashville. Resolution RS 2019-1750 by Withers, Van Rees, and others recognizes Saturday, June 1st to Sunday, June 30th, 2019 as Nashville Pride Month, celebrating the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities, and further recognizing the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, an important milestone event for the gay rights movement. Resolution RS 2019, 1751 by Council Member Hall, requests Metropolitan Government to enter into cost-sharing agreements with the State of Tennessee to install traffic signals at intersections in which state routes intersect with Metropolitan streets or roads. Members of the council, that is the consent agenda. I'm now going to go to um, get committee reports. I'm going to go first to Council Member Roten for budget and finance. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance approved resolution 2019, 1729, 1730, 1731, 1732, 1733, 1734. 1736, 1737, 1739, 1740, 1741, and 1742. 12 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized for Parks and Library. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, resolution 1736, 1737, 1738, 1749, Parks, Library, and Arts. Voted seven in favor, zero against. You got it. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, planning and Zoning, Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, uh, we um, reviewed uh, 1744 and 1745, and both got an endorsement, 12 4, zero against. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Roberts, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Safety voted seven in favor, zero against, four. 39, 40, 41, 42, and 46. That's right. Thank you, Council Member Roberts. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. We had uh, three items, I believe, on the consent agenda. We had RS 2019-1744, uh, where we were six in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1745, we voted six in favor, zero against. Then RS 2019, 1751, where Council Member Hall's uh, engagement was so high, he brought three new members to the table, and we were nine in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hager, traffic and parking. We had two resolutions, RS 2019-1743. Press the sponsor, that was deferred for one meeting, three, four, zero against. We also had resolution 2019-1751 by Paul, and that particular resolution passed 340 against. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Lee, rules yes, confirmation. Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah. The rules Committee approved resolution 2019-1747, 2019-1748, 2019-1750, 0 All right. And with all of the committee reports in, I would like to move the consent agenda. All right, so I've got a motion to approve the consent agenda. I've got a proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt the consent agenda. Okay, now we're back on measures that were not on the consent agenda. Uh, if you'll go back to your first page, if you're watching or if you're following the agenda, um, back to the top, Resolution RS 2019, 1685, by Council Members Vircher and Gilmore, authorizes the Industrial Development Board to accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to Oliver McMillan Spectrum Emory LLC. Uh, I'm going to go to Council Member Vircher. Hold on. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I need the committee report. All right. Council Member Roden, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, we approved an amendment for it. 12 in favor, zero against, and approved as amended, seven in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you, Council Member uh, Roten. Back to you, Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the amendment. All right, so I've got a motion on the amendment, properly seconded, back to you for an explanation. I'm at the yield to uh, Vice Chair uh, Roten. All right, and you can go to the Vice Chair or to Mr. Jameson, whatever's better. Mr. Jameson? I, either one, Mr. Jameson. Okay. 
the amendment would amend this uh, lease agreement with four main provisions in the revised terms. The IDB would pay no fees or dues under the condo declaration as existed in the original. There's a provision for the consequences of cessation of activities by the subtenant Metro. This revised lease would clarify that it's cessation by the subtenant of the defined permitted uses that trigger the consequences, uh, specifically a payment increase. Uh, the lease lessee, that is Oliver McMillan, would be allowed to sublet uh, just to uh, the subtenant as defined in the lease, that is the Metropolitan Government, and cannot terminate the lease uh, with the, the sublease with the subtenant unless Metro consents there too. All right, back to you, Council Member Vircher. I'd like to move as amended. Okay, I got a motion to move the amendment properly seconded. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. I need to be recorded as abstaining. Okay. All right, back to you, Council Member Vircher. You've got a motion on the floor, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor on the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Back to your bill as amended. Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move it as amended. All right, so I have a um, motion to approve as amended, um, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, I think we're going to have to go on the board because we have an abstention. Um, so um, seeing nobody else in the queue, we are on the board. Uh, Madam Clerk. If you will open machines, we are voting on Resolution RS-2019-1685 as amended. Okay, machines are open. Everybody cast their vote. Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. 34 in favor and one abstention. All right. Uh, resolution RS-2019-1685 passes. Uh, we're on RS-2019-1721 by Council Members Vircher, uh, Mina Johnson, and Murphy. This requests the Metro Planning Commission and the Metro Planning Department uh, to amend the adopted subdivision regulations to require community meetings prior to approval of concept plans or prior to approval of final plats when no concept plan is required. Councilmember Vircher, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor New Committee report. All right, Councilmember Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Planning and Zoning recommend the deferral of one meeting, 1240 against. All right, back to you, Councilmember Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to defer this one meeting. All right, got a motion to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral say aye. Aye. Those no. Uh, the motion to deferral passes one meeting. Uh, resolution RS 2019-1725 by Council Member Vircher. Uh, appropriates $20,090,300 to certain accounts for the benefit of the Davidson County Sheriff's Office, the State Fair, the Industrial Development Board, Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency, GSD General Purposes Debt Service Fund, GSD School Purposes Debt Service Fund, USD General Purposes Debt Service Fund, the Community Oversight Board, Municipal Auditorium, and reducing $550,000 of appropriations for the GSD School Purposes Debt Services Fund. Council Member Vircher, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any committee report? Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Budget Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to defer this one meeting, eight in favor, one against. All right. Back to you, Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I need to uh, move for a one meeting deferral. Okay. Motion to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no. Motion to defer is adopted one meeting. Uh, resolution RS 2019-1726 by Council Member Vircher. Uh, authorize the issuance of $454,100,000 in interfund tax antici anticipation notes of the Metropolitan Government. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Council Member Roten, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance. Move to defer one meeting, 12 in favor, zero against. Council Member Vircher. I move for one meeting deferral. Got a motion to defer one meeting. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer one meeting is adopted. All right, we are now on Resolution RS-2019-1735 by Council Member Vircher. Approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of State to the Davidson County Election Commission for the provision of certified voting equipment. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Roden, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Was, the amendment was approved 12 in favor, zero against, and it was approved as amended 12 in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. I'd like to move the amendment. Okay, you got a motion to approve the amendment, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Virtue, explanation. We Mr. can go to Mr. Jameson. Mr. Jameson, you're recognized. The amendment simply attaches a signed version of the grant documents that was not provided in the original version. All right. Hearing that explanation, we're back on a motion to approve on the amendment, properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Council Member Virtue, back to your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move it as amended. Okay, it's a resolution. Sorry, it's a resolution as amended. Uh, Council Member Virtue has moved to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Remember, we're on RS 2019 1735. Uh, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution 1735 as amended is adopted. Okay, we're now on RS 2019-1743 by Council Member Bedney, O'Connell, and Hager. Uh, approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for a general maintenance agreement for I-440 traffic operational deployment of blue toad spectra power over ethernet data collection devices. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Uh, yes, committee report. All right. Um, one of them is yours. Let me go to Public Works first. first uh, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We had identified uh, with staff that there was an exhibit missing from this, and uh, we discussed the possibility of a one-meeting deferral, and staff said that from a timing perspective, that would not be uh, in any way injurious. So the Public Works Committee voted uh, for a one-meeting deferral, six in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, traffic and parking, Council Member Hager, you're recognized. Traffic and parking move to defer this at the request of sponsor one meeting three four zero again. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bedney for planning and zoning. Uh, planning and recommended approval uh, twelve four zero against. Okay. And you're back on your resolution. Uh, yes. Can I ask Jamison a question? Sure. Uh, you can certainly try. Okay. Mr. Jamison, you're recognized. Mr. Jamison, I, I sent you an email asking about privacy concerns. Were you able to get some information or maybe the... We I mean, I'm, I'm basically concerned that the data collection doesn't infringe in privacy. Understood. So uh, we are waiting on, and I do believe that in the time that the committee meeting started, we may have received the missing exhibit from Public Works. It, it may be in my inbox. I just have not read it. And I suspect that that may uh, disclose the, the privacy ownership. From their web presence, Blue Toad, th this, this is a company that as you're driving down the interstate and you see on the marquee that it'll take you 20 minutes to get to Donaldson, that is the website that uses your Bluetooth connection as your car passes to rate your speed of travel and use that for predictability purposes for the T-dot signs. The company discloses on their website that they only access the first six of the 12 code Bluetooth code so that you retain your anonymity. They only know that your approximate location and speed and that's it. But there's no statement within the resolution or, or the attached agreement as to who owns the data except that Blue Toad can control, or use the data. We're waiting on that exhibit and I'm sure we'll have it if we don't have it already by the time this comes back up uh, before the council. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, support the one meeting deferral and request that the information be provided to the council. Uh, I think many of us, including Rosenberg, has in the past uh, stated that we don't want to infringe on the Nashville residents' privacy concerns. We don't need to monitor where every person is driving around the city at every minute of the day. So I think it is important that we get that clear. So. With that, I'm asking for a one meeting deferral. All right, so uh, Council Member Bedney has asked uh, move for a one meeting uh, deferral, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're on a motion to defer one meeting. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer one meeting is adopted. Okay, so that completes the, uh, the resolutions. We do have two late filed resolutions. One is by uh, Council Member Murphy and O'Connell. Uh, this honors the life, legacy, and public service of Metro Trustee Charles Edward Cardwell. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to move to suspend the rules. So I have a motion to suspend the rules to get this matter before us. Uh, any objection to suspension of the rules? 
Seeing none, Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I would request if it, I think it has gone around that everyone uh, feel free to sign on to this resolution. We are going to be able to get this framed um, and deliver it to the family to be at the visitation um, before the funeral. We won't be able to get it framed tonight, but it will be for, for the family and there. Um, and so I, I think all of us feel very um, the same, deeply saddened um, because Charlie Cardwell really was who I think a lot of us aspire to be, someone who really was a public servant for all the right reasons. And so I'd also like to thank my co-sponsor, Freddie O'Connell, for letting me be lead sponsor of this. Um, and so with that, I move for approval. And um, please see Rosie if you did not sign the resolution uh, paperwork tonight. All right, so I have a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Council Member Lee, I usually go to you just to make sure that the Rules Committee heard this um, resolution. Yes, and we agreed with doing this. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, I wanted to also uh, appreciate you for taking some time for a moment of silence at the beginning of this meeting, and I wanted to appreciate uh, Council Member Murphy. Uh, Charlie was a constituent, as was Marie, and uh, for me, this was a, a moment of some additional heartbreak because in this period of uh, learning about his death, we had literally been playing uh, phone tag uh, about his being the last signature on my nominating petition. And I've got a, a voicemail from him that I will never delete uh, from that moment. So thank you to colleagues for supporting his memory. I will just briefly echo everything Council Member Murphy said and everything that you said. They are all true things that I know besides being a public servant, he was a kind-hearted advisor to me as I look to get more involved in, in public service, and I already miss him. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, so I have a motion to approve the late file resolution regarding Mr. Cardwell. Um, any other discussion? Resolution was moved and properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Uh, resolution is adopted. Uh, we have one more late file resolution. This is by Council Member Vercher. Approves a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Office of Emergency Management to fund the purchase of portable or emergency lighting for large scale events. Uh, I'm going to go to you, Council Member Vercher. Oh, Council Member Roten, you've got it. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would move to approve uh, 2019 1752. I have the committee report. Committee approved, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, so uh, this is, um, let's make sure this is this late file resolution, so you just have to move to suspend the rules to get oh, it. My apologies, I need That's to okay. move to suspend the rules. Okay, so uh, there's a motion to suspend the rules on this late file resolution. Any objection? I'm gonna go to uh, Council Member Lee. She's shaking her head. Council Member Lee. This went also in front of the committee and we agreed to this. All right, thank you. All right, so no objection. Uh, Council Member Roten, you're on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to, um, I gave my committee report and I would like to renew my motion uh, to approve RS 2019 1752. Okay. So, um, Council Member Roten has moved for approval. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Resolution is uh, adopted. Thank you. Okay, so now we're on bills on first reading. Um, um, Council Member Cooper, before I even got there, I'm recognizing you. Council Member Cooper. Oh, uh, thank you. Just very quickly, um, before we get into this, I would like to ask the clerk to record me as a no on 1616. Is that the resolution that just passed? No. Which, oh, on first reading. Okay. I'm trying to catch up. Okay. Okay, so uh, Council Member Cooper is going to be recorded as no on the first, on 2019-1616. All right, I've got other people lined up. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Pursuant to Rule 8, I'd like to request one meeting to follow of a Bill 1634, please. Okay. All right, so this is Bill 2019-1634. Uh, Council Member uh, Sledge, I believe uh, you're citing a rule to bump this off. Yes, Rule right? 8. Rule 8, okay. So by rule, that has to be deferred. Uh, that has to come off the agenda for uh, first reading. Uh, Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Just very quickly, uh, 
I guess, Mr. Jamison, so if we ask to be uh, recorded as a no on 16-16, it can still say in the consent? No, it'll, it's pulled from consent under Rule 38. Okay, however. that's that's where I got a little confused. That's why I wanted clarification. Right. All right, thank you. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. Um, 1616 will be pulled off of as we pass everything on the first reading, as will be uh, 1634. Um, Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and, and maybe I missed this. I don't see where this is being referred to budget and finance. Uh, you're talking about, uh, you're 16, talking about 1616? 16, yes. Okay, so it's a clerical error. It will go to budget and finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, we'll get that fixed on the next thing. So uh, let me tell you where we are just to make sure everybody's clear. We're on bills on introduction, introduction first reading. As you know, we usually just pass them in mass. Because we've got objections on 1616, we'll pull that off and we'll vote on that separately. Um, and then um, the um, uh, BL 2019-1634 by Council Member Glover. Um, is pulled off of it, so we won't be voting on that tonight because it's pulled by automatically by Rule 8. All right, Council Member Pridemore, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm questioning the pulling of the f bill on first reading. I know it's, you know, we have our normal procedures, and this is normally just, I mean, it's just a uh, generic passing of all the bills so we can get assigned to the committees and then discuss it. I just don't understand what, by pulling it off tonight, what uh, what we plan to um, gain other than a long discussion about something that inevitably has to go to to the committees and be pa uh, be uh, discussed later. Uh, uh, Council Member Pridemore, if you're talking about BL 2019-1616? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's just being pulled off of when we vote for them in mass. It'll be taken up separately tonight. Mr. Jamison, am I saying that correctly? That's correct. So it, it's still it, it's not going to be discussed, just, just going to take it up to vote on passing it on first reading? So um, typically when you vote on matters on first reading, we, we do pass right. them in mass. Um, uh, Council Member Sledge has used Rule 8 on a particular bill. That will come off of the agenda. I, it will I, show up I, next week or right. next meeting on first reading. Mm -hmm. On BL 2019-1616, that bill is being pulled off because there's objection, but we're going to vote on it tonight on first reading. They just want to be recorded as voting no on first reading. So we're going to vote on passing on first reading. We will be passing on BL 2019-1616 As we would tonight. be if we just, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This is what happens when you come back off vacation. I, I just, I just want to be clear. That'll teach this, you that not to go no, on vacation anymore. This, this is, this will still be assigned to committees, right? It's still going to go through and be assigned to committees. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Okay, everybody clear on where we are? All right. So we are uh, voting on all measures on bills on first reading, except for BL 2019-1616, and. Uh, BL 2019-1634, they are being pulled off of the um, first reading as we go through. Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to pull 1635 and per Rule 8 defer for one meeting as well. I'm actually in conversation with the Codes Department right now about billboard regulations. I don't know if that meets. And that would give me a chance to confer with Councilman Sledge. Yeah, so... Um, Councilmember uh, Swope, um, Rule 8 allows you to pull measures off when someone else has a matter affecting just your district. I think 1635 affects the county as a whole. So pursuant to Rule 8, you can't use per Rule 8 because it, if it's just affecting your district, that would be one thing. But I think this one affects the entire county. It does. Just affects your district? No, it, it affects the entire county. Okay, so pursuant to Rule 8, you can't pull that one off. No, okay, that's right. fine. But, um, Councilman Sledge, I ask for your uh, um, meeting on this. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Yeah, I, I just think it's kind of important that we uh, get a little clarification on this because this is, this is used multiple times out here uh, with this particular piece of property. If I'm not mistaken, 
Uh, everything that we have approved out there, all the bond money, uh, the improvement, the new buildings, all that stuff, the people who live in my district will be picking up the tab, helping to pay for all of this, even though it's not sitting in my district. So I, I, I hope that as we go forward, uh, on these types of issues when we have a piece of property that really belongs to the city, even though it's sitting in a particular district, I think it's pretty shallow the way that we keep doing this and the way we use that rule. And so um, I, I realized by rule eight, I, I didn't, but I also feel like that people need to understand that we're literally playing, we're playing games here when every person in Nashville who pays taxes is helping pick up the tab on this. Thank you. Councilmember Glover, um, understand we're, we're simply following the rules as they're written, okay? Uh, Councilmember Bedney, you're recognized. Yeah, I wanted to ask you to clarify something. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Swope can pull it out of the consent agenda. He cannot claim that rule to defer for one meeting, correct? So, um, Mr. Jamison, do you want to respond to that? My understanding was that Councilmember Swope wanted to the mandatory deferral under Rule 8. That would not, in this instance, be uh, an appropriate motion because the underlying uh, legislation is a countywide impact legislation. I understand. He, he but could, if he wished, pull it for discussion on first reading, yeah. do so. Just wanted to clarify. All right. Thank you, Councilmember. Okay. Let's go back, make sure we're all clear. So we are voting now on... Um, the measures on first reading, bills on introduction and first reading. There are two bills on that, um, on first reading that are being pulled. Again, um, Bill 2019, 1616, we're going to vote on that after we vote on all the other measures. Uh, Bill 2019, 1634, by rule, is deferred a meeting. We won't be voting on that tonight. Got it? Uh, anybody else got any questions? Any other discussion? Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to also pull 1633 off of consent. Okay. And this is, you want to pull this off of the consent and vote on it separately? Correct. Okay. I have, I have some questions that I need to get answered before we move it on. Okay. If there's another way to do it, I'm happy to do that. All right. So we're pulling, um, again, you. we're pulling, um, let's make sure we're all clear. BL 2019 1616, uh, BL 2019 1633, BL 2019 1634 are coming off um, bills on first consideration that we're voting on uh, as a block. Anybody else got any issues? Any other questions? Councilmember Vercher, you just like talking. <laughs> That's all right. Thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, just want to ask the sponsor of BL 2019-1633 if there are some, some um, um, unanswered questions. Would the sponsor be open to, to deferring it and letting us move forward with the agenda? Just, just posing it to the sponsor. Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm happy to defer it. Um, if that's the question, I'm, I'm, I just need to get a couple of questions answered before we vote on it. So if that means defer till the end of the consent agenda and then get my questions answered, I'm good with that. I may end up deferring it completely, but I need to ask a couple of questions. So you tell me procedurally what I need to be doing. Mr. Jamison. Uh, the only concern I have with deferral is that because we're approaching the near end of the term, this is a, a referral to the Planning Commission, and if the Planning Commission would still have time to consider this if deferred uh, for passage this term, and I don't know their, their scheduled date um, if this is deferred two weeks. Right. Um, so I have a pending legislation question. That's all I needed to get answered before we do this. If I could get that question answered at some appropriate time before we vote, that's that's what I would need to do. All right, so we're gonna pull your measure off of it and then we'll bring it back up and then we can discuss. And then we'll talk about it. Now Thank I'm you. gonna go to Council Member Sledge for a point of order. Point of order, are we on bills on introduction and first reading? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. All right. That may be the longest time we've ever spent on this. All right. All right, so again, we are pulling three measures off, bills on introduction and first reading as we vote on them in mass. BL 2019-1616, BL 2019-1633, BL 2019-1634 have been pulled. Uh, any other issues, any other questions? Okay, with that understanding, those three bills having been pulled, we're, billing, we're voting on bills on introduction, first reading. Um, do I have a motion to go ahead and approve? 
Got a motion properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those bills on introduction to first reading that stayed on bills on introduction to first reading have been passed. Now we go back to BL 2019-1616 um, by Council Member Virtue and O'Connell. Let me just read exactly what we're doing. Ordinance approving an agreement by and between the Metropolitan Government of, and Preston Hollow Capital LLC relating to the operation and modernization of the on-street metered parking program within the public rights of way of the metropolitan area, making necessary related amendments to various provisions of Titles 1, 2, 12, and 13 of the Metropolitan Code to facilitate the uh, operation and modernization of the on-street metered parking program. We do not have committee reports. This is a bill on first reading. Um, we will be voting on that tonight. Um, again, this is a voice vote. We do not have to go on the board. I know we've got two people that have wanted to show objections. Uh, we are uh, ready to vote. Any discussion before we vote? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. Okay. So you can give a show of hands or go to the board. Um, so uh, if people do want to be recorded, um, let's do this um, because it's a voice vote it passes but if people want to be recorded uh, for people who voted no if you will raise your hand we will mark that okay just raise them high again remember this is on first reading all right just record who voted no i think it's it's a voice vote You got that. Anybody wishing to abstain? If you will, hold up your hands. Okay. All right. So on a, vo vo a voice vote, BL 2019-1616 passes just on first reading. Again, for those who are viewing on the, uh, um, from the audience, uh, this is just on first reading. It now goes on to second reading where it will go to um, the Planning Commission. Um, so it's going to the Planning Commission or Planning Committee? Uh, committee and Commission. Planning Commission and uh, the Planning Committee. It's been referred to the Traffic and Parking Commission and um, all the, the uh, appropriate committees will actually hear it uh, in the Council. All right. So we are now on uh, BL 2019-1633 by Council Member Allen. Ordinance amending Chapter 17.08 and 17.16 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding short-term rental property owner-occupied and short-term rental property non-owner-occupied. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Again, remember, this bill is on first reading. Council Thank you, Member Mr. Allen. Chair. I appreciate the opportunity just to ask some questions on, on timing, pr principally. Um, Mr. Jamison, pending legislation is so complicated, I never understand it. So a question has been asked. Because this has an effective date that would be in October or sometime down the line so that people can adjust to changes in language. If this goes before the Planning Commission, does it become pending legislation? How does that affect that effective date? And if we chose to amend that effective date, how does all that work? Um, so the, the great thing about bills on first reading is that we haven't done an analysis, so we don't have much comment to offer you, but I will do the ugly thing and think out loud in front of you. So the pending legislation doctrine really came to a head in the Harding Academy case in West Nashville. Essentially what the Court of Appeals said was that once a bill, so sometimes zoning bills get passed and someone who wouldn't, who wouldn't like that zoning bill just races to get a permit before the legislation can be finalized. And essentially what the Court of Appeals said is the minute that there is a public body that is responsible for holding a public hearing holds that hearing, it becomes uh, pending legislation. So for Metro's purposes, that has typically in most instances meant for zoning bills, the Planning Commission. So the Planning Commission, once they hold that, a permit could not be issued in contravention of where that bill may be going. But in your case, I think it may be a case of first impression, you have a later effective date. Right. So there's nothing that a issued permit would be issued in contravention of if it were issued 
before that effective date. So my off-the-cuff opinion would be those permits could continue to be issued until the effective date, even though it's pending. So there, I, would, there would be time to continue to talk about amendments and, and right. items believe, like that. I believe the current proposed date is in October, October. Uh, and, and perhaps later. But yeah, that is my initial okay. opinion. Okay, so I'm just trying to assure that there is time because I'm sure this is one there will be discussion on that, and that we will want to make amendments and that I'm not putting anybody in a position that will cause hardship. That's and, not the goal. Right, and certainly not by tonight's action. And certainly not by tonight's action. Thank you. In that case, then I would move for approval with, with the brief explanation that, that I know we will work on this in the future. Okay, so I've got a motion to approve on first reading. It's been properly seconded. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. As recusing, please. Okay, so I have one abstention. Um, so I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Uh, this is on first reading, so we do not have to go on the board. Any other discussion on this? Again, first reading, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Note the abstention. Uh, and the uh, matter of so BL 2019-1633 passes on first reading. Uh, BL 2019-1634 by Council Member Glover uh, is deferred automatically by Rule 8. It'll show up on the next calendar. Uh, we have one other late file uh, Ordinance. This is by Council Member Vircher. Uh, this is uh, the adoption of the capital improvements budget for fiscal year 2019 2020. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Well, hold on. There you go. Is it on? Okay, hold on. Showing that it's on, I'm going to go back to you. Okay, there, there you go. There we go. I'd like to move to suspend the rules. Okay, so this is the capital improvements budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. Um, there, um, Council Member uh, Vircher has moved to suspend the, the rules so that we can get this measure in front of us tonight. Any objections to the suspension of the rules? Council Member Lee, any objections? Not at all, sir. All right. Um, so seeing no objections, we're back to you, Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. All right, so we've got a motion to approve on first reading. This is the capital improvements budget. On fiscal first year, reading. On first reading on fiscal, fiscal year 1920. Um, so I've got a motion to approve, properly second. Any uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those no. Uh, the um, the late filed ordinance passes on first reading. Thank you, Council Member Vircher. All right, so that was an interesting first reading. We are now on bills on second reading. All right, so um, let's get organized. Here we go. Bill 2018-1320 by Council Member Mendes uh, approves an amendment to the Rutledge Hill Redevelopment Plan. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. May report, please. All right, Councilmember Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to defer to July 2nd. 12 in favor, zero against. All right, Councilmember Mendez, you're right. Like, I'd like to move to defer to the first meeting in July with a brief explanation. All right, I got a motion to defer um, to the first meeting in July, properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Mendez. So this is one of the pieces of TIF legislation from last fall um, that got put on hold pending the TIF study group. And my anticipation would be to, um, if we can pass the new legislation that's pending, to let this one go. But it needs to stay alive until we work through the hopefully new legislation. That's the reason to defer to July. Okay. So I've got a motion to uh, defer to the first meeting in July, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, deferred to the first meeting in July. Uh, substitute Bill 2019-15-18 by Council Member O'Connell. Men's the Metro Code regarding booting services. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, we will defer this for one meeting. Okay, looks, all, looks like all the committee reports are in. You want to defer uh, for one meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, so i got a motion to defer for one meeting. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer one meeting uh, passes. Bill 2019-1598 by O'Connell, Roberts, and others. Men's the Metro Code to establish a fleet schedule for low or zero emission vehicles owned by Metro government. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right. Council Member Roten, <laughs> Budget and Finance. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to amend five in favor, two against, uh, pardon, 12 in favor, zero against, and to approve as amended, five in favor, two against. All right. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, Public Works Committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We voted, let me just get the vote count for you accurate here. Uh, we were nine in favor, zero against in favor. All right. All right. Uh, and you're on your bill. Thank you. I would like to move, uh, let's see, I actually, on this one, I need to suspend the rules to get a late filed amendment on. All right, so you've got a proposal. Oh, sorry, let me, I think I, maybe the correct order is, let me move an amendment that is pro the timely filed amendment. Okay, you've got a timely filed amendment, so you've got a motion to approve the amendment properly seconded back to you for an explanation. Sure, uh, on all three bills, we actually, after filing, continued to have once departments were able to review the language of the bills. We worked with them to get some technical cleanups and in some cases there were just some refinements that needed to get to be made uh, that clarified things and in other cases there were uh, moments that we needed to uh, update schedules, et cetera. Uh, in, in this case, uh, the, these, I consider these all friendly housekeeping amendments suggested by the departments and or uh, the administration or other, other stakeholders here, so that's what uh, this one is. All right, so I've got a motion to approve an amendment. This is on 2019-1598, uh, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're back on your bill as amended. All right, and then I, yeah, I think we had, no, I'm sorry, 1598 was not one of the ones with late filed. So I think on this right. one, I'd like to move approval as amended with a brief comment. All right, so you've got a, a motion to approve 1598 as amended, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm excited to be on second reading on bills tonight that will let Metro lead uh, in three key areas, fleet standards, uh, green building standards, and renewable energy. And I want to start uh, this comment by expressing gratitude. I'm grateful. I think as we came into the chamber tonight, I had 13 co-sponsors really appreciative of the broad-based support we've had for this. I'm also grateful to leadership and staff. Uh, at Metro General Services, Nancy Whittemore and her team with Laurel Creech and uh, Stacy providing uh, a lot of support on this from within the department on uh, fleet and then Nashville Electric Service with DaCosta Jenkins, uh, Laura Smith and Antonio Carroll who many of us work with on a regular basis as well as to staff in the mayor's office. And I'm certainly grateful to the many stakeholders who provided input and support as we reach this moment. Um, this is a trio of bills we'll consider the next two here. We've worked really hard to be fiscally responsible as well as to take a long view. Uh, ultimately, this gives us a low cost, high impact approach. Uh, we've, I hope colleagues are clear that we've engaged the administration as well as affected departments throughout the process. Their feedback has been helpful uh, and all the amendments make these better bills. Ultimately, even if you don't care about or believe in climate change, these are good governance bills. They compel our own government to reduce its emissions, to improve the energy supply throughout the Tennessee Valley, and to reduce the operating costs and improve the health of those who work in our buildings and live in our city. Uh, I will recommend a vote in support, and thank you again for all those who are already signed on. All right, thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Um, so we are on BL, BL 2019-1598 as amended. Uh, the motion is to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill is adopted on second reading. We're on BL 2019-1599 by O'Connell, Roberts, and others. Amends the Metro Code to create green, green building standards for buildings owned by Metro government and design standards for new and renovated Metro buildings and facilities. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this one we have both a timely filed amendment as well as a late filed. Let's go ahead and move the timely filed amendment, please. Let's see if we can get some committee oh, reports I'm sorry. first. That's yes, okay. my apologies. Uh, committee reports. Council Member Roden, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The amendment was approved on 1599, seven in favor, zero against, and the bill was approved as amended, seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, uh, Council Member Swopes. Uh, Codes and Fair and Farmer's Market. Codes, Fair and Farmer's Market happily approve the amended 
Bill 1599 540 against. All right, thank you. Councilmember O'Connell, you're on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, uh, with committee reports in, I'd like to move the bill, uh, move the uh, timely filed amendment to the bill. Okay, you've got a timely file, filed amendment that you're moving. It's properly seconded. Back to you for discussion of the amendment. Sure. Uh, on this one, the bill basically, again, adopted uh, department feedback that recognized geographic constraints, um, current uh, city design constraints that would prevent us from being able to get uh, some to basically to qualify in a way that set us up for th th this amendment lets us set ourselves up for success rather than failure uh, based on some changes to the underlying standards uh, that rely on uh, some site specific issues since Nashville and Davidson County as a consolidated consolidated government covers so much geography and we do need resources uh, in communities out to the county line. We wanted to make sure that we were increasing those standards. This puts some additional focus on the urban services district and has a few other cleanup items, uh, but this is basically, again, letting us accomplish the underlying goals of the bill, uh, and I recommend this amendment. All right, so I've got a motion to approve the amendment. We're on 1599, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? This is the timely filed amendment. Uh, no discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Council Member O'Connell, you're back on your bill as amended. Thank you. And having appeared before the Rules Committee, I would like to suspend the rules for a late filed amendment. Okay, you got a late filed amendment. Um, Council Member Lee, did it come before you, your committee? Yes, sir. Everything's all right. All right. Uh, so I have a motion to suspend the rules to get a late filed amendment on this bill. Any objection? Seeing none, Council Member O'Connell, you're on your late filed amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. This one includes a couple of changes. Um, we we had a good suggestion to get a, you know, kind of a plan for uh, this uh, uh, that comes back to Council eventually. We adjusted the timing on that at department request. And again, in some of this, anybody who has followed energy policy uh, knows how important uh, renewable energy certificates are, commonly known as RECs. Uh, we included a facility uh, through which those could be used as a part of this process as well on the retrofit piece in particular. Um, so again, these are helpful, friendly amendments that originated in Metro departments, uh, and we are, I, I am personally pleased to offer them. Again, I think they ultimately improved the bill, and I would like to move uh, this amendment. All right, so I got a motion to approve what we call a late filed amendment, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Now, Council Member O'Connell, you're back on your bill as amended twice. Thank you. I would like to move approval of the bill as amended with a brief comment. All right. So, uh, motion to approve as amended, properly seconded. Uh, the floor is yours, Council Thank Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. This, is, um, this one updates our, we have an existing green building standard, uh, thanks to, uh, in part, to the mayor as well as the man to your right from over a decade ago. We heard from general services that they have spent a decade building better buildings. We're kind of giving them encouragement to do, uh, you know, just that small little bit uh, more in the urban services district. Uh, we think this will go a long way, and we're also encouraging them to consider these programs these standards uh, when we go into the retrofit process. Again, I can't stress enough that this is one of those measures that gives us long-term good governance. It actually reduces the long-term operating cost of Metro when we uh, go forward with any new buildings. I encourage colleagues to support it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, motion to approve as amended. Um, been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, again, we're on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, BL 2019-1599, as amended, is um, passed on second reading. Uh, BL 2019-1600 by O'Connell, Roberts, and others, amends the Metro Code to establish a renewable energy standard for Metro government. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, would like to get committee reports, please. All right. Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Budget Thank and Finance. You. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. 2019-1600 uh, was amended. It was approved 7-0, and the bill as amended was approved 7 in favor, 0 against. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. In Public Works, we considered this one and voted 6-4. Uh, we did have one uh, abstention in committee, but we recommended six in favor. All right. Uh, and so you're back on your bill now. Council Thank Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let's move the timely filed amendment. 
All right, you've got a proposed amendment to uh, 1600. It's a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Sure, and this one again, uh, Nashville Electric Service was very helpful uh, in providing some uh, additional flexibility on this. Uh, some of this has again to do with the availability of RECs. Um, this is a friendly amendment uh, and I recommend approval. All right, so got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. Uh, amendment is adopted. Um, back to you, Councilmember O'Connell, for a late filed amendment. Sure thing. This, uh, this is, uh, let's move to suspend the rules, please. Okay, I got a motion to suspend the rules to take up a late filed amendment. Councilmember Lee. Yes, sir. This was presented to our committee and we agree to send it forth. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, so I have a motion to suspend the rules to get a late filed amendment on 1600 before us. Any objections? Seeing none, um, motion to suspend is uh, granted. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're on your late filed amendment. Thank you. I'd like to move the amendment. All right. So there's motion to move the late filed amendment. It's properly seconded. Back to you for discussion. Uh, thank you. We again, in that final discussion after the amendments were, were present, we figured since we were getting some planning uh, materials from general services on uh, the green building piece. It would be get good to get them here as well. Um, and so this is again a, a friendly housekeeping amendment and I recommend its adoption. All right, so I got a motion to approve the late filed amendment, properly seconded. Any discussion on the late filed amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed no, late filed amendment is adopted. Council Member O'Connell, you're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move the bill as amended with a brief explanation. All right, so uh, there's a motion to approve. We're on 1600 as amended, obviously twice, uh, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. With this final of the package, um, you know, part of the, I, I actually uh, got asked earlier by Council Member Porterfield about how kind of the idea came to me for these bills. Back more than 15 years ago, uh, I decided in getting a, a little note in my utility bill from Nashville Electric Service to sign up for the green power switch to the tune of $4 a month. I've been getting some portion of my household energy supply from clean sources either in the Tennessee Valley or elsewhere uh, ever since. And last year when Councilmember Van Reese presided over the introduction of community solar into Nashville, we also began subscribing to a community solar panel. I would encourage Nashvillians across the city to consider signing up for either or both. Uh, you can go to GoSolarMusicCity.com to si subscribe to a community solar panel. You can go to GreenPowerSwitch.com to add green power to your utility bill. Part of my thinking there was that Metro ought to be doing the same thing. This puts us in an even better position of kind of having some actual targets, uh, ideally inducing even more community solar. I've t spoken with Council Member Hall about some potential sites in his district. I know uh, Metro departments routinely are looking for those prospects and we will eventually need some help from the Tennessee Valley Authority to do that. But this gives us the flexibility to go find sustainable energy sources uh, at low cost for the Metro Energy Supply. Uh, I am excited to be able to offer this and would encourage colleagues to reflect on uh, the many pieces of correspondence they've received and support, and I'm grateful to those who have shown up tonight to show their support in person. Uh, many of them are in the gallery. Uh, and thank you all for working with me on this. Uh, I'm really excited to be looking at this as one of the big pieces of work we're doing late in the term. Uh, very grateful and recommend approval. Right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Elrod, you're recognized. Thank you, Rear Court is abstaining, please. All right. All right, Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to make a brief comment here, and uh, uh, I, I want to recognize the hard work that Councilman O'Connell has put into this bill and the other two previous bills uh, regarding uh, the same topic. Uh, there are many council members who took a little bit of a deeper dive into this and had questions and concerns. And although uh, we really enjoy hearing a lot from Councilman O'Connell, the fact that he's been standing here talking for a while illustrates the fact that he has been uh, working very hard to accommodate the concerns of other council members, and he continues to work very hard to uh, address these bills moving forward. So uh, I very much appreciate him taking the time to dive into this like he has. I know he's been working a long time, working very hard and he continues to do so. So I'm happy to stand up here in support of this. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Johnson, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to uh, echo my colleague and want to uh, thank for Councilman O'Connor's uh, leadership, as well as uh, administration and all other department. Uh, this is a great uh, first step because we have, as a uh, metro government, have talked a uh, livable Nashville, you know, Green Ribbon Commission, and those three bills actually put all their effort of the citizen volunteers, all the work, years of work, into action. And so I really appreciate our lead sponsor, Council Member O'Connell's effort to bring this uh, forth. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Swope. Call the question. Previous question's been called for. Uh, we've got a second. We're on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are on BL 2019-1600 as amendment. We're voting on it. What? So we haven't approved it yet. <laughs> All right, we're actually getting ready to vote. We're gonna have to go on the board because we have an abstention. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will, uh, if you will open, open up the machines so people can vote. Remember, we are on BL 2019-1600 as amended on second reading. Machine is open. Everybody want to vote? <laughs> All right. Uh, before I tell Madam Clerk to close the machines to take the vote, I know there's going to be applause in the back, so I might as well bang the gavel. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, if you'll close the machines, take the vote. Thirty-three in favor, one abstention. All right. So, um, Bill uh, 2019-1600, as amended, passes on second reading. All right. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, we are now on BL 2019-1612 by Council Member Bedney and Henderson. Amends the Metro Code regarding contracts for supplies and services in excess of 60 months. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Uh, committee reports? Uh, Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Budget and Finance. Good call. 1612 was approved by Budget and Finance. Seven in favor, zero again. All right. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is... Uh a follow-up on some conversations we have here about procurement. Uh, I think it is important for the council to uh, to have a say on, on contracts that go on and on and on. I think we should really have an opportunity to look at it. I have, uh, uh, I actually met with the procurement officer, I met with different people, asking them for feedback, so I feel very confident that this is, um, uh, we are on the right track with this. Uh, so I ask you for your support, and if you have any suggestions or you want to uh, look at any amendments, uh, as a matter of fact, I met with the uh, Chamber of Commerce to ask them for feedback. I mean, uh, we just want to come up with a solution uh, that will help us really have uh, more employees for Metro, working for Metro instead of for contractors, when they could be working for Metro and having all the benefits and be able to uh, have long-term employment with the city. So with that, I ask, and I ask, uh, I thank uh, Council Lady Henderson for co-sponsoring it. So I ask for your approval. All right, thank you, Council Member. We're on 2019-1612, motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? We're on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 1612 uh, passes on second reading. Bill 2019-1613 by Council Member Mendez. Amends uh, the Metro Code pertaining to annual reports from tax increment agencies. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Committee report, please. Council Member Roden, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance approved 1613. Seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Mendez. You're recognized. Move approval. Okay, motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
as no. Uh, 1613 passes on second reading. Bill 2019 16 17 by O'Connell and Bedney authorizes Metro Government to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, and to relocate one fire hydrant assembly for properties located at 838B and 843B Golf Street. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. We need committee reports. Councilmember Bedney, planning and zoning. Yes, thank you. Uh, after a long uh, discussion on the subject, the committee recommended approval 1240 against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Despite a lack of messages from the mayor, we recommended seven in favor, zero against. All right, you want a motion to approve? That'd be great. All right, motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. 1617 is adopted on second reading. Uh, BL 16, BL 2019, 16, 18 by O'Connell and Bedney authorizes Millennial, Millennium Music Row LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachment in the right of way located at 70 Music Square West. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. The committee recommended approval 1240 against. All right, Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. We only had seven, but they were in favor. All right, good. Do you want a motion to approve? Yes, please. Motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 2019-16-18 uh, is passed on second reading. Bill 2019-16-19 by Councilmember O'Connell and Bedney, uh, approved by the Planning Commission, authorizes Nashville Prop Co. LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 306 Gay Street. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Councilmember Bedney, you're recognized. The committee recommended approval of the amendment and uh, of the legislation as amended, 1240 against. All right, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized for you, public Mr. works. Thank you, Mr. President. We had, uh, we also approved the amendment and then the bill as amended, seven in favor, zero against. All right, so you're on your bill. Thank you. We do have an amendment on this that is a basic uh, housekeeping bill, uh, and I would like to move the amendment. All right, so I've got a um, motion to approve an amendment, properly seconded. Uh, back to you, Councilmember O'Connell. It's a housekeeping bill. Any other comments? No. Like housekeeping amendments. Housekeeping me. amendment, sorry. All right. Um, so um, I'm this, gonna this was just a, 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 I'll read you the title of the document, Commercial General Liability Coverage Part Declaration, I believe. Right. Uh, let me see. No, that was the exhibit. I'll try to find the, uh, uh, I don't have it handy with me. We looked at it in committee. I think it adds the certificate of liability. That was, that maybe that right? was it. Yeah, it does do that. All right. So I've got a, uh, that's what the amendment is. Got a motion on the amendment, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, the amendment is adopted. You're back on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. Okay, got a motion to approve as amended. Um, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. All, did somebody say aye? There you aye. go. Any opposed? No. Uh, the motion 2019 <laughs> 16 19 as amended is adopted on second reading. Bill 2019 16 20 by OK. Uh, Council Member O'Connell and Bedney uh, authorize the Metro government to abandon existing easement rights for property located at Dr. Walter S. Davis Boulevard. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. The committee recommended approval 1240 against. All right, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Public Works recommended seven in favor, zero against. All right, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Got a proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Post no, you adopt Bill 2019-1620 on second reading. Bill 2019-1621 by Councilmember O'Connell and Bedney. Ben's Alley, number 126 right of way. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. i uh, like to request committee reports, please. All right, Councilmember Bedney, you're recognized. Yes, the committee uh, recommend the approval of the amendment and the legislation as amended, 1240 against on both cases. All right, thank you, Councilmember. Traffic and parking, Councilmember Hager. Um, 1621. 1621. Uh, is that it? Yep. Yeah. Was uh, approved as amended 340 against. 
All right, thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Works. President. We in Public Works recommended uh, as amended, seven in favor, zero against. All right, you are now on your bill, 2019-1621. Uh, thank you, I'd like to move the amendment. Okay, you've got an amendment. Uh, the motion uh, is to approve the amendment properly. Seconded, back to you for an explanation. Uh, once again, this was an administration uh, recommended housekeeping amendment, and right. we considered it in committee, and I recommend approval. Okay, fixes a typo is my understanding. That is my uh, understanding as well. So you've got a uh, motion to uh, approve the amendment properly. Seconded, any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you. I'd like to move approval. All right. 1621 as amended. Uh, proper motion. Proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 1621 as amended is adopted on second reading. Uh, and we're now on BL 2019-1622 by Council Member O'Connell and Bedney. Abandons a portion of Maynard Avenue right of way. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. The committee reviewed the amendment and recommended its approval and the legislation as amended as well, 1240 against on both cases. All right, thank you, Council Member Bedney. Uh, Council Member Hager, traffic and parking. Uh, 1622 was the proposed amendment. With the proposed amendment, uh, was passed 340 against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized for public Thank you, works. Mr. President. From Public Works, we recommended as amended, seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member. You're on your bill. Thank you. 1622. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move the amendment. Okay, you've got a uh, motion to amend, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Not sure uh, why the House was so dirty, but we have a housekeeping amendment, and I'd All like right. to move approval. All right, so uh, housekeeping amendment. Uh, you got a motion to approve the amendment, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're back on your bill as amended. We're on 2019-1622. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move uh, the bill as amended. Okay, got a motion to uh, move 1622 as amended. We're on second reading. Any discussion? Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1622 as amended say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill 2019-1622 is, uh, as amended, is adopted on second reading. We are now on bills on third reading. All right. All right. Uh, BL 2019-1472 as amended. This is Council Members Bedney, Sledge, and Cooper. Um, this was uh, this amends the Metro Code to require an appropriation to the Barnes Fund for affordable housing equal to future economic and community development incentive grant payments. Council Member Bedney, you are recognized. Uh, do I move the amendment? So you have a proposed amendment, so uh, you can move the pr proposed amendment. Uh, or do I need to ask for a committee? Uh, well, I'm looking at this. It says approved, but was re-referred back to ad hoc affordable housing. Council Member Mendez, did you all take that one up? We did. Um, that uh, was uh, approved for, recommended for approval as amended, 740 against. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member Bedney. So I want to move the amendment. All right. So I've got a motion to approve the amendment. We are on BL 2019-1472. There's a motion to uh, amend, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Bedney, for an explanation of the amendment. Uh, the amendment was an effort to, I mean, can I ask uh, Mr. Jamison to uh, Mr. Mr. Jamison can explain it. The go. original version provided that upon the uh, appropriation of an incentive uh, grant that the Barnes Fund uh, appropriation would likewise be made. This simply clarifies that it's upon the incentive appropriation through the regular uh, annual budget process uh, for clarification. It also provides, however, that the in, uh, consequential uh, appropriation to the Barnes Fund could be equal or even greater than the economic incentive fund uh, previously provided. Council Member Bedney. Thank you. And, and that was a, a response of some of the comments you guys had made uh, before. So we felt that it was important to clarify that. Uh, the, the mayor's office is okay with it. And so I'm asking for your support. I think this is really uh, 
a legislation that is going to create a baseline of equity. Uh, as we uh, uh, develop the city, as we uh, incentivize uh, growth, that we also look at the impact that that growth could create. Uh, obviously, uh, the mayor always exceed. Uh, for the last years, we had a, a, an investment from uh, Colleen, Megan Berry, and now Mayor Briley that exists exceeds uh, what uh, this legislation will create, but this will create a baseline that is going to be good for us. So I'm, I'm hoping I can have your support. And I want to thank uh, the co-sponsors, uh, Council Member John Cooper and uh, Council Member Kobe Sledge for their support on this. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so Council Member Bedney, we're still on the amendment. So you've got a motion to, um, to approve the amendment. Yeah, I just wasted that speech. It was a beautiful speech, <laughs> but you're just on the amendment. All, All right. right. Well, you just guys remember that on the next page. <laughs> so I ask for uh, approval of the amendment. All right. So I got a motion to approve the amendment. It's properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Now, Council Member Bedney, you were on your bill as amended. It was already amended, but now you've amended it again. Um, you can give your same speech or you can do whatever you want. I'm Council afraid they, they'll kill me if I do all that over again. Okay, so please, please vote for this. This is good. Uh, all these people behind us want us to support it. Uh, it's good. We need to have, you heard it in the beginning when people came to speak to us, they want us to take care of our affordable housing issue. So this is uh, moving the needle in that direction. So I appreciate your support in passing this on third reading. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bedney. I'll just point out to the viewing audience that there are some really good people behind you, but there's not a lot, okay? <laughs> All right. It's, it's the quality that matters. It's the quality that matters. Okay, so you got a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. This is 2019-1472 uh, as amended. It's on third reading. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. Okay, we are on the board. Um, we're gonna go back. Um, because it's got negative votes, we'll need to go on the board. We're on BL 2019-1472 as amended. Um, Madam Clerk, if you will open up the machines so that we can take a vote. Again, we're on 2019-1472 as amended. Everybody vote who wanted to take a vote? Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machines, take the vote. 25 in favor, two against, four abstentions. All right, Bill 2019, 1472 as amended, passes on third reading. Right. Uh, we're on BL 2019, 1537 by Council Member Scott Davis. Uh, this was disapproved by the Planning Commission on January 10th, 2019. It changes 0.18 acres from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 327 Gatewood Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis, you are recognized. Committee reports, please. Um, planning and zoning, Council Member Bedney. Yes, thank you. Uh, the committee recommended uh, approval for the one meeting deferral, 12 4 0 against. All right, thank you. Council Member, back to you, Council Member Scott Davis. I can move for a deferral. Got to move for a deferral for one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion for one meeting say aye. Opposed, no. Um, motion defer one meeting is adopted. BL 2019 1541 by Council Member Kendall uh, and Wiener uh, changes 1.55 acres from CS and IR to SP zoning for properties located at 500, 502, 504, 506, and 508 28th Avenue North and 510 27th Avenue North to permit an office building. Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I believe all committee reports are in. They are. Uh, so I would move approval. Got a motion to approve. We're on BL 2019-1541. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Well, all the people in the back, thank you. 
All the people All the in the people. back. There's uh, at this point. There's seven people back there. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Council Member Kendall has moved adoption on third reading of BL 2019-1541. Again, properly seconded. Uh, nobody in the queue. We're on the vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. BL 2019-1541 is adopted on third reading. BL 2019-1559 by Council Member Hastings. This was approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0. Changes 0.2 acres from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 616 Vester Avenue. Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized for planning and zoning. Yeah, the committee uh, recommended approval 12 4 0 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Hastings. Thanks again, Mr. President. We'd like to move for final approval. I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt BL 2019 1559 on third reading. Um, BL 2019 1569 by Council Member Scott Davis. This was disapproved by the Planning Commission 9 0 on January 10th, 2019. Changes to 2.3 acres from RS5 to RM20. Zoning and property located at 1804 and 1806. Lishy Avenue. Council Member Davis, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I need to move the uh, move the substitute in um, in the committee. I'd like to move the substitute also. Okay, let's get a committee report first, and then I'll come back to you, Council Member Bedney, uh, Planning and Zoning. Yes. Uh, well, this was a uh, he asked uh, that we approve the substitute, and then that we re refer it to the Planning Commission and the planning committee. Okay, so what was, did you all vote on the? Yeah, 12-4-0 uh, against. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Scott Davis, back to you. I'd like to move the substitute and refer Black to the planning commission and then back to the planning committee. Okay, so let's get, why don't we take the substitute first. You got a motion to approve the substitute? Yes, sir. All right, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the substitute. For the sake of time, because I know we have a lot of bills, okay? But when you have four people to come and support, I'm sorry, four people in opposition, which are very important people, then you have 30 people come and support, but then you have people say, hey, that's not gonna affect the care of the neighborhood. But right next door, you have approval for 148 units right next door, and those 148 units according to the developer, not codes or planning, that they're gonna be allowed to do Airbnbs there. And I don't think that's right. But yet my constituent, who's been working for the last two years, you know, but that's okay. We're doing a substitute and we're addressing some of the affordability issues and we're getting rid of STRs in that development. Even though the 148 units next door according to the builder, will be allowed to have, you know, STRPs. Now, I don't know how true that's going to be because they're not codes or planning, and I defer to those fine people there first. But we're going to move this forward, you know, back to planning commission, and then we're going to bring it back to the council. I appreciate everybody's help. I want to thank everybody for their patience, but we're going to move the substitute, which gets rid of the, um, the short-term rentals aspect of this, and then we're going to look at some affordability language like we use with the Oakwood Flats and some other things. And we're also going to probably address some of the, um, the other concerns there with the site plan. Thank you. God bless you all. All right. Thank you, Council Member Davis. Uh, so this is a motion to approve the substitute. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on getting the substitute in front of us? Approving the substitute. Seeing none, we're on the substitute. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Substitute is adopted. Councilmember Davis, you're now on your substitute. I guess I'd like to move the bill as substitute. No. No, so you need to, you're referring it to the Planning Commission. Planning Commission, and, and did you want to, to re refer committee. back to Planning Committee? I'd like to refer back to Planning Committee okay. also. Okay, so this is a motion to refer to the Planning Commission and to the Planning Committee. Okay, properly seconded. I've got Councilmember Bedney with his uh, microphone up. 
Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that the committee uh, supported his request to move it back to the Planning Commission and to the Planning Committee as well. Okay. That just, that I, think, I think we got that. That's what the motion, that's what his motion is right now. Yes. So Thank what you. we've got, just to make sure we're all clear, is that Councilmember Scott Davis has moved to substitute, which is we're now on. We're on the substitute, and he is now referring the substitute back to the Planning Commission and, and re-referring it back to the Planning Committee. Is that correct? Uh, here, I got you, Scott. Councilmember Davis, you're right. That is correct, and if there's no more need for any more Monday morning quarterbacking, I'd like to like to send it back to the committee and to the, the planning commission and to the committee. Okay. So that's the motion. Uh, it's properly seconded. Any other discussion? So, um, Councilmember Davis, we're checking the dates. I'm going to go to Mr. Jameson just for uh, an explanation on when it should come back. We, we just need a date certain on when it comes back to the floor, and we understand that it can go to the Planning Commission June 27th, so the first meeting in July may be the different I'm date. okay with that. First meeting in July. All right. So um, we're going to take your motion to refer back to the Planning Commission and refer back here on um, the 7th. first meeting in July. Got it? That's right. Okay, so everybody clear with the motion? So it's going to the Planning Commission. It's going to come back here um, for the first meeting in July, and it will also be referred back to the Planning Commission, uh, excuse me, the Planning Committee here. That's the motion. Properly seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. Thank you, Council Member Davis. All right, so we are now on uh, substitute bill, bill 2019-1570 by council member Hager, uh, approved by the planning commission 7 to 0 on 425-2018, changes 35.89 acres from R8 to RS 7.5, zoning for various properties located along Old Hickory Boulevard from 6th Street to Butler's Lane. Council member Hager, you're recognized. With all the committee reports in, I move for passage, please. Looks like there's one still sitting here, according to my calendar. Council Member Bedney, do you have one? BL 2019-1570. Yes, sir. Uh, Sorry. It's okay. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. You tried to ignore me? <laughs> no, no, no. I'd never do that. Okay. Well, uh, you heard my feelings. Uh, we recommend the approval 1240 against. Right. Back to you, Council Member Hager. Move for passage, please. All right, got a pa move, motion to pass on third reading, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, you might want to go um, say you're sorry to Council Member Bedney. Sorry, sorry, uh, we're Council on Member the bill. Bill. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, aye. no. Uh, bill, uh, substitute bill, bill 2019-1570 by Council Member Hager passes on third reading. Bill 2019-1571 by Council Member Hager. Uh, applies the contextual overlay district, the 39.74 acres of property located along Old Hickory Boulevard from 6th Street to Butler's Lane. Council Member Hager. Committee reports, please. This time you got it right. Uh, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. I like the way that sounds. Uh, <laughs> I the committee has recommended approval, 12 4 0 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Hager. Uh, request passage, please. Got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill 2019 1571 passes on third reading. Substitute Bill 2019 1572 by Council Member Vercher. This amends 4.78 acres of a plan unit development for properties located at 301 South Perimeter Park Drive and 347 Luna Drive. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Any committee reports? Mm -hmm. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The committee recommended approval 1240 against. All right, Council Member Vercher, back to you. I move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Bill 2019 1573 by Council Member Vercher uh, changes 4.78 acres from CS and R10 to OG zoning for properties located at 347 Luna Drive and 301 South Perimeter Park Drive. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I need committee report. Uh, Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Planning and zoning. Uh, the Planning Committee recommended approval, 12 4 0 against. All right, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. I move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Bill 2019-1574 by Council Member Hall and Haywood, approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on February 28, 2019. Council's 4.04 acres of a plan unit development for property located at 4237 Little Marrowbone Road. Council Member Hall, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Council Member Bedney, uh, Planning and Zoning. The Planning and Zoning Committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, Council Member Hall, you're recognized. Move for passage, please. Got a motion to pass on third reading, 1574, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. BL 2019-1575 as amended. Council Member Sledge uh, changes 3.14 acres from IWD to SP zoning for property located at 900-904-910. A, 914 and 916, 8th Avenue South, 901, 909, 911, 913, 915, 917, 919, 921, 923, and 925 Bass Street to permit a mixed unit development. <laughs> Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Council Member Bedney, uh, Planning and Zoning. The Planning and Zoning Committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, Council Member Sledge, back on your bill. Move approval. Uh, this is a motion to approve 2019-1575 as amended on third reading. Uh, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. BL 2019-1576 by Council Member Wiener and Bedney uh, permits 4.07 acres of the existing SP zoning for property located at 730 Old Hickory Boulevard to permit up to 48 multifamily residential units and add an access and public utility easement. Council Member Wiener, you're recognized. Thank you so much. I'd like to withdraw. Okay. Um, it's withdrawn. Okay. So the bill is withdrawn. We are now on um, BL 2019-1578 by Council Member Sledge, as amended. Changes 2.89 acres from IR to SP zoning for property located at 520 Hagen Street, 640 Merritt Avenue to permit a mixed-use development. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Bedney, we're on 2019-1578, planning and zoning. Yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the committee uh, recommended approval of the legislation, 12 in support, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, I move approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading, 1578 as amended. It's adopted on third reading. Bill 2019-1579 by Council Member Scott Davis. Approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on February 28, 2019. Changes 1.59 acres from MULA to MUGA. Zoning for property located at 1404 Dickerson Pike. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. There's crutches flying over there. Yeah, my cane hit his crutch. You know, it's just the. the this is kind of the injured section over there. Injured section. All right. Council uh, yes. Davis. I'd like to move for approval, please. With, I'm sorry, I apologize, Councilman. Um, committee reports, please. Council Member Bedney, you recognize planning and zoning. This kind of feels like a conspiracy. Uh, so the committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Scott Davis. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor uh, say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Bill 2019-1580 by Council Member Kendall. Uh, approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 3-14-2019. Changes point 31 acres from CS to MUL zoning for property located at 900 Buchanan Street. Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The Planning and Zoning Committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. Back to you, Council Member Kendall. Move approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading. Second. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion to approve on third reading is passed. BL 2019-1580 is passed on third reading. Uh, BL 2019-1581 by Council Member Swope, approved by the Planning Commission 10 to 0. 
on April 25th, 2019, applies a corridor design overlay district to 812.34 acres of property located along Nolensville Pike, southward from Zoo Road to the south side of Burkett Road. Council Member Slope, you are recognized. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Committee reports, please. Uh, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The committee uh, recommended approval 12 uh, for zero against. All right, Council Member Swope. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move approval with a brief comment. All right, got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Swope. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to thank Council Lady Blaylock, Councilman Bedney, Councilman Potts, and Councilman Elrod for what seems to have taken years to do. My sincerest thanks go out to the planning department for helping us through all this. Um, this will eventually clean up everything on Nolensville Road north of Old Hickory and will guarantee that everything south of Old Hickory Boulevard on Nolensville remains the residential community that we all like to see it. And with that, I move approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve properly. Seconded. Any discussion? I, I want to thank... Uh, I, I don't have a button to push because I'm... Oh, you weren't properly recognized, but yes. I'll recognize you, Council Member Bedney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to thank a second Council Member Swope and thank everybody that uh, supported this effort. Uh, this is, like he said, it's been a long time coming, and it, it's... Uh, so people understand this is just going to uh, have a criteria for design guidelines along the corridor, and, and we are very thankful uh, that is finally happening. So thank you, Council Member Swope, and... The others that are involved, Council Lady Blaylock, uh, Potts, Elrod, so many that, that help with this. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member. So we're on a motion to approve on third reading Bill 2019-1581 by Council Member Swope. It's been properly moved, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1581 on third reading. Bill 2019 1582 by Council Member Hastings, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6 0 to 1 on 228 2019, changes 8.72 acres from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for properties located at West 20 Lane, unnumbered west of Brownlow Street, to permit 375 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Hastings. Yes, Mr. President, with the committee reports, we'd like to move for final approval. We've got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading, 1582. 1583 by Council Member Glover. Uh, this was approved with conditions disapproved out by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 228-2019. Changes 2.78 acres from RS15 to SP zoning for property located at 3049 Earhart Road to permit a single family residential structure and billboard. Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Yes, thank you. Uh, the committee recommended approval of this legislation. 12 in support, zero against. Back to you, Council Member Glover. Move approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 1583 is adopted on third reading. Uh, Bill 2019 1585 by Council Member Sledge. Uh, approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 314 2019. Changes 0.30 acres from R6 to OR20A, zoning for properties located at 747 and 74, 749 Alloway Street. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The committee recommended approval of this uh, legislation. 12 in support, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Sledge. And I'd move approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 1585 is adopted on third reading. Um, BL 2019-1586 by Council Member Sledge, approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 314 2019 Changes 0.74 acres from IWD to MUGA zoning for property located at 1009 8th Avenue South. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Uh, planning and Zoning recommended approval, 1240 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Sledge. I move approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, we're on BL 2019-1586. We're voting for it on third reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1586 uh, is adopted on third reading. BL 2019-1587 by Councilmember Scott Davis. This was approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 to 0 to 1 on 314-2019. Changes 4.54 acres from CS and RS5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1330-1326 Dickerson Pike. Elmhurst Pike unnumbered in 136-138 Elmhurst Pike to permit a maximum of 221 multifamily residential units. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Planning and Zoning recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, Councilmember Scott Davis, you're right. for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading bill 2019-1587. Substitute Bill 2019-1588 by Council Member Hastings. Approved with conditions, disapproved without. By the Planning Commission 9-0, 328 in 2019. Changes 1.16 acres from OR20 to RS7.5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1609 and 1613 Hampton Street, 2414 and 2416 Brick Church Pike, and Hampton Street unnumbered north of Avondale Circle. Permit 37 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings, you are recognized. Thanks again, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports. Council please. Member Bedney, you're recognized for planning and zoning. Yeah, the committee recommended approval 12 for zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Hastings. Yes, sir. We'd like to move for approval. All right, got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passing um, this is substitute bill 2019-1588 on third reading, please indicate by saying aye. Opposed, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Um, motion passed, the substitute bill, bill BL 2019-1588 is passed on third reading. BL 2019-1589 by Council Member Hastings. Uh, approved with conditions, disapproved without. By the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 314-2019. Changes 0.85 acres from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1600, 1602, 1606, 1616 Hampton Street on, and 1200 Avondale Circle to permit 10 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to move for approval. Committee reports, please. Got to get a committee report from Council Member Bedney. I guess you're all looking at me because I have to say something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to say something. Yes, you do. The committee recommended approval 12 for zero against. All right. Council Member Hastings, you recognize you're on your bill. All right. Mr. President, again, we'd like to move for approval. Okay. So I got a motion to approve properly seconded. We're on 2019-1589. Uh, this is a motion to approve on third reading. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Substitute Bill BL 2019-1590 by Council Member Hastings. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 328-2019. Changes 2.9 acres from RS 7.5 and CL to C SP zoning for properties located at 20, excuse me, at 1241 North Avondale Circle and 2422 Brick, Brick Church Pike. Permit 25 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. All right, Mr. President, <laughs> would like to ask for committee reports, please. You got it, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The Planning and Zoning Committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, thank you. Back to your bill, Council Member Hastings. Yes, sir. Once again, we'd like to move for approval. So I got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. That was substitute Bill 2019-1590. BL 2019-1592 by Council Member Scott Davis. Approved with conditions by the Planning Commission 7-0 on February 28, 2019. Changes 0.84 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for properties located at 343, 345, and 347 
Edwin Street. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. The committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. Back to you, Council Member Scott Davis. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're voting on BL 2019-1592 on third reading. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1592 is adopted on third reading. BL 2019-1593 by Council Member Kendall. Approved by the Planning Commission 6 to 0 on 214 2019. Changes 0.30 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 2416 Albion Street. Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Planning and zoning. Thank you, sir. The committee recommended approval 12 in support, zero against. All right, Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Move approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 1593 is adopted on third reading. Bill 2019 1594 by Council Member Scott Davis and Anthony Davis, approved by the Planning Commission 10 to 0 on 425 2019, expands 212.07 acres of the urban zoning overlay for various properties located east of Ellington Parkway. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Bedney. Yes, the committee recommended approval, 12 in support, zero against. All right, Council Member Scott Davis. Move for approval with a very brief explanation. All right, I got a motion to approve on third reading. This is on 1594, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Davis. I'd like to thank the assistance of my colleague, Anthony Davis, and for holding community meetings and also um, just being all around good guy. Thank you. Thank you, member. Thank you, Council Member Scott Davis. I'm, are we voting on whether Council Member Anthony Davis is I apologize. Okay. Move for approval, please. Got a motion to approve on third reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're on 1594. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 1594 is adopted. BL 2019-1595 by Council Member Hastings. Approved with conditions. Disapproved without. By the Planning Commission 90 on 12 13 2018 Changes point 63 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1533 Lock Road and 1605 Seminary Street to permit eight multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. All right. Again, Mr. President, would like committee reports. I've lost my council member. I'm going to go to council member Murphy oh. for planning and zoning. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to switch the microphone. There you go. Council member Murphy, you're recognized. Planning, zoning, and historical voted 12 in favor, zero against. All right. Back to you, council member Hastings. Okay. We'd like to move for approval. I got a motion to approve on 1595. This is on third reading. Got a motion to approve properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Bill 2019-1596 by Council Member Scott Davis. This was approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 228-2019. Changes 1.63 acres from R6A to RM15A zoning for various properties located along the south side of Kingston Street. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Committee report, please. Council Member Murphy, Planning and Zoning. 12 in favor, zero against. I think I heard that. What was the vote? Both in favor, zero again. Got it. Thank you. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Move for approval, please. Got a motion to approve. We're on 1596. Motion to approve. <laughs> properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1596 on third reading. BL 2019-1601 as amended. <laughs> Council Member Rosenberg. Approved with well, everything's been approved. This amends the Metro Code relative to contracts for government relations and lobbying services. Council Member Rosenberg, you are recognized. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. If you'll indulge me very quickly for those of you following my son's postseason baseball game tonight, his team won in dramatic fashion. The Bellevue Cardinals won eight to six. Um, thank you. So, <laughs> and I'm, so this is the bill that uh, ensures that in the future we won't be paying lobbyists to defund public schools and uh, move approval. So all the committee reports are in. Uh, we are on BL 2019-1601 as amended. Um, we are on third reading. It's properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? 
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill 2019-1601 as amended is adopted on third reading and congratulations to your son. Bill 2019-1602 as amended, Council Member Mendez. This is amends the Metro Code regarding annual debt reports to the Metropolitan Council. Council Member Mendez. All committee reports are in, move approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. Uh, the motion is adopted, 1602 as amended, is approved on third reading. BL 2019-1603 by Council Member O'Connell and Hurt. Uh, provides for the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period beginning at 6 o'clock a.m. on June 5, 2019 and ending at 12 midnight on June 10, 2019 in conjunction with the 2019 CMA Fest and related activities and events. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Roden, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We Budget and Finance approved 1603, seven in favor, zero against. Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Park. Mayor. Parks, Library, and Arts uh, approved 740 zero against. All right, uh, and Convention Tourism had already approved. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval, a brief comment. All right, got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Back to you for uh, um, for the comment. Thank you. Uh, we, again, in, in this term, have done a number of these that allow both the event organizer and, and various metro uh, entities to participate in creating safe and effective events. CMA Fest, obviously, is one of Nashville's signature events, uh, and we have been assured that no cherry trees will be harmed in this production. Uh, so I move approval. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell, we're on BL 2019-1603. All committee reports are in. Been moved properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. <laughs> the uh, 1603 is passed on third reading. Motion passes. Bill 2019 1604 by Councilmember O'Connell and Virtue and others uh, ex approves the execution of an amended and restated agreement with respect to the development and operation of the Museum of African American Music, Art, and Culture. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I believe we have all approvals in on this, so I would like to move approval. Okay, so I think it got re-referred oh, back to It did get re-referred. My apologies. Yes, Council. let me request a committee report there. Council Member O'Connell, uh, Council Member Roten, you're recognized for budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I need to uh, defer on this. The committee reports were to defer one meeting on 1604 and 1605, uh, seven in favor, zero against. However, um, Council Member Mendez was going to talk with someone and see if we could uh, suspend the rules to have these two taken up tonight. And I want to kind of defer to him so he can explain what's happened and then whatever I need to do on either of these. I think I'm just giving a committee report on one and I don't know if I'm doing 05 for Council Lady Virtue or not, but I'd, I'll let Council Member Mendez discuss what's kind of occurred and then we'll move on from there and maybe Councilman, um, our legal counsel can explain to us what we need to do. So. All right, let me go to Council Member Mendez. I know Council Member Davis has a comment as well. <laughs> let's go to Council Member Mendez and let's make sure we know exactly what we're doing with this bill. Council Member Mendez. Okay, so the, the short answer is I had questions, they've been answered, um, and I'm happy. Uh, the somewhat longer answer is that um, I had asked questions several weeks ago on the development agreement about whether um, the plans and development budget mentioned in the agreement existed um, and be had been approved by Metro in any way. And um, over the past several weeks, I wasn't able to get that answer from anybody. Um, I, uh, I guess I bypassed Metro and talked to the museum's lawyer today who provided me um, comfort on the questions I was asking. And so the whole reason to move to defer 16 04 or recommend deferral of 1604 yesterday budget and finance was not having had that answer yet. I've got it now. I don't have a problem any longer. All right. Thank you, Council Member Mendez. Okay. So um, let's make sure we get this in proper form. I'm going to go back to Council Member O'Connell first uh, to see. I think all the reports are in. If you could move the bill, and then I've got people who want to talk about the bill. Right, I think, so it might, I guess, let me make sure I want to do this. It, it might be worth my understanding uh, from our Vice Chair of Budget and Finance if the intent of the committee 
was one meeting deferral to allow council member Mendez to get that information and if so if he has received and is comfortable then I'm I'm willing to move to suspend the rules to to do this tonight council member Roten and that's correct if if Councilmember Mendez was fine. The committee was in agreement that we would suspend the rules tonight to take up these two bills. All right. Back in which to you, case, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I, ha, ha, I think at this point then it is appropriate to move to suspend the rules. All right. So uh, Councilmember O'Connell has moved to suspend the rules to go ahead and take up this measure tonight. Uh, is there any objection to the suspension of the rules? No hands, no. Uh, so uh, the rules are suspended. Back to you, Councilmember O'Connell. In which case, I will. Uh, and uh, again, I just want to make sure I've got clarity here. I think we've got a substitute on this. Um, you have an amendment on this one. Uh, amendment. Okay. Uh, I thought I'd seen a substitute as well. I'm going to move. I'm going to move the amendment. All right. So we're on BL 2019-1604. Uh, there is a motion to um, adopt an amendment. I'm going to go back to. I, I think it. I think it is a substitute. It is a substitute. Sorry. It's a substitute. Yeah. It, well, I think it was a substitute. And it was approved seven zero. Okay. Let's, uh, then, in which case, I'd like to move the substitute. Okay. So you're going to move the substitute, um, properly seconded, but you need to get an amendment on the substitute. No, 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 just uh, we're substitute. just we're making sure we've got this one is right. Is that correct? Just a substitute. I've, all I had in my packet, I believe, was a substitute. That's all there is. So there's no amendment. The amendment. Is I have an amendment on 1605, Mr. Vice Mayor, but not 1604. Okay. It's just a substitute on 1604. Okay. So it's um, so um, you are moving the substitute Correct. on 1604. Okay. Everybody clear. Okay, so it's a motion to get the substitute in front of us. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so it's a motion to approve the substitute properly seconded. Uh, back to you for an explanation of the substitute. If, if, it, if my understanding is correct, the substitute basically uh, adjusts the agreement to uh, satisfy Councilmember Mendez's concerns. All right, so I've got a motion to approve the substitute properly seconded. Now, Councilmember Davis, sorry, I made you stand up so long. Now I can come to you. Work's been done. Um, we just wanted to make sure that the um, <clears throat> that the rules were suspended. And and without further ado, let's move this forward so uh, we can get the work on our museum. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Davis. So we are now uh, on the substitute. We're voting on the substitute. I got a motion to approve the substitute, properly seconded. Any discussion, further discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, we're voting on the substitute to get that in front of us. Uh, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. <laughs> substitute is adopted. Councilmember O'Connell, you're on your bill as substituted, Senate 2019-1604. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I believe at this point we now have those committee reports in. Uh, I would like to move approval with a brief comment. Okay, so I've got a motion to approve. BL 2019-1604 as substituted. Uh, motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember O'Connell. Sure. Uh, I would like to thank our Chair of Convention, Tourism, and Public Entertainment Facilities uh, and just wanted to check on something she identified. I see still in the captions for both 1604 and the bill as substituted an incorrect name for the museum. It is the National Museum of African American Music, and I do want to at least make sure that the record tonight shows that. It'd be great. I don't know, again, if we need to make a textual change so that the caption uh, reflects that when recorded by the clerk's office. That would be great. Uh, the other thing that is great is that tonight we are taking uh, significant steps to increase the probability that that museum not only opens, but opens on time and on schedule. There will still need to be uh, some fundraising done, and I would encourage anybody at any time this year, if you find yourself with some additional funds, that you uh, you look to the National Museum of African American Music uh, and consider a timely donation. But I'm proud to be here with Metro fulfilling a commitment to this important museum and hope to see it open. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Um, this is, I know that a lot of people put a lot of work into this, and I want to make sure this is right. Um, so if you would, um, I think we'd like to get the name right. Sure. All right. So we'll take an oral amendment on Great. the floor uh, as long as there's suspension of the rules. So you'll have to move I will for suspension. I move to suspend the rules prior to pass. 
All right, so I've got a motion to suspend the rule so we can make sure we get the name of the museum correct. Any objections to the suspension of the rules? All right, no objection. Then I'm back to you. If you will just move the amendment so we can make sure that we get this correct. Sure, in, in the bill as substituted, and, I, and again, I, this might only be in the caption, uh, but wherever in the bill, if, there, if it is in the bill, uh, we're, the substitute fixed it, although I see on my display uh, that we've got it. I just, wherever it appears in caption or elsewhere, uh, the Museum of African American Music, Art, and Culture, that should be substituted with the National Museum of African American Music. Right. Uh, I got a proper second. Okay. Um, any other discussion? So we're on the amendment to make sure we get the name correct. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The motion is adopted, that amendment is adopted. Now you're on your bill completely, 2019-1604, as substituted and as amended, you're ready to go. Thank you, and I recommend approval. Okay, motion is to approve, properly seconded. We are on, again, 2019-1604, as substituted and as amended. Uh, any discussion, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. BL 2019-1604, the substitute as amended is adopted. We're now on BL 2019-1605 by Council Member Vercher, Syracuse and Gilmore. This approves a sublease for property located at the corner of Broadway and Fifth Avenue North from Oliver McMillan Spectrum Emory LLC to Metro Government to be used as a museum celebrating African American music. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any committee report? All right, uh, Councilmember Roten, you're recognized for budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance approved the amendment to the bill seven in favor, zero against. Again, this was just like 1604. It was moved to defer uh, one meeting. However, that was based on Councilmember Mendez's issue. I think that's been rectified. So, if the sponsor could move to suspend the rules so we could take this up. It would be much appreciated. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let me go to planning and zoning. Council Member Murphy. This uh, was, the motion was to defer one meeting. 12 in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you, Council Member. All right, Council Member Mendez, I'm gonna go to you just to make sure that we're good on the substitute. Oh, well, I'm sorry, not on the substitute, on the bill, and I think there's a proposed amendment coming. Yes. All right, thank you, Council Member. All right, I'm gonna go back to you, Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we have the same dynamic um, as related to, to 1604 on 1605 as it relates to the, the naming of the museum. And I know we expressed this um, uh, when this was before us uh, in prior council meetings, so I don't know how we're still getting the name incorrect, but we do need to, to correct the name on, on 1605 too. Um, I believe I need, do I need to suspend the rules to get the amendment um, on the floor? Well, here's what I think we need to do in order to make sure we get the bill properly before us on third reading because of the budget and finance deferral, you need to suspend the rules to, to make sure it's okay if we proceed ahead tonight on third reading. Okay, I'd like to suspend the rules. Okay, so I got a motion to suspend the rules to make sure that we get this matter before us on third reading. Is there an objection to the suspension of the rules? Council, Council Member Hart, hold on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't think 60, 1605 is exactly the same. It's basically saying that it is going to be used as a museum celebrating African American music, not that it was, you know, reciting it as the name, uh, official name of the museum. Okay. So well, I don't know if it's necessary to actually make that same change on 1605. Okay, so we're gonna check on the amendment, but you don't have any objection if we go no, ahead No, I and don't really have okay. any, but I didn't know when it was appropriate for me to say anything. It's okay. Thank you, Council Member. So I'm gonna go back and make sure, any objections, suspension rules get this matter before us tonight. Seeing none, Council Member Vercher, you are now on your bill. Um, so I need a motion to approve on third reading. That's right, Council Member Vercher. 
Okay, so I need to go ahead and move the amendment. Uh, yeah, you can go okay. ahead and move the amendment. I want to move the amendment. Okay, so uh, there's a motion to um, approve the amendment, properly seconded back to you, either for an explanation or I can go to Mr. Jameson. Go to Mr. Jameson. Mr. Jameson, you're recognized. The amendment uh, does three principal things. There's a technical reference to a space number that was a typographical error. It should have been 011 instead of 110. That's on page three. On page six, it clarifies that Metro Legal will be entitled to any required notifications due to changes under the sublease. And lastly, on page 63, it eliminates the provision where uh, Oliver McMillan would otherwise have had security liens in the contents of the museum. That's eliminated. All right, so uh, we're on the amendment. It's been properly moved. That's the explanation, properly seconded. Any other discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we're voting on the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Council Member Virtue, you are now on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. Okay, so we're on Bill 2019-1605 as amended. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. It is in the middle of the, uh, of the bill. It does mention the same name as the previous unamended name. So if we wanted to make it consistent, I think that we do need to Make it consistent. All right, so Council Member Vercher, I'm looking for an amendment to make sure we get the name correct. That's what I stated earlier in my initial motion, Vice Mayor. Okay, so um, be, uh, because it's a late filed amendment, it has to be done orally. Is there an objection to suspension of rules to get an amendment in front of us to make sure we get the proper name? Any objection? Seeing none, you're now on an oral amendment to make sure we get the name correct. Properly seconded, any discussion? Thank you, Council Member Syracuse for finding that. Uh, we're on the amendment to correct to make sure the name is correct. Um, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Now, Council Member Vercher, you're on your bill as amended, uh, as amended several times. As amended, as amended. As amended, as amended. Uh, I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded, any other discussion? So we're now on BL 2019-1605, as amended several times. Um, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1605, as amended, as amended, uh, is approved on third reading. BL 2019-1606 by Councilmember O'Connell, Virtue, and Bedney. This was approved by the, by, with conditions by the Planning Commission, authorized the Metro government to purchase property from the state of Tennessee, located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we re-referred this to Planning, Zoning, and Historical, so I'd like to get that committee report. All right. Uh, Council Member Bedney is back. Your, your Vice Chair did very well. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized on 1606. I have the utmost trust on my vice chair. Good. You guys don't know how great she is. The committee recommended approval five, four, zero, uh, four against. Okay. Council Member O'Connell, back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We've had quite a bit of conversation about this over the last several months. Um, you know, this is uh, a site with a National Register eligible building on it. I have had the opportunity to tour. Uh, the building, it is a building that I would say that if Metro has the, the power and will to do, uh, we should look at a way to preserve and potentially adaptively reuse. Uh, we've had some conversation about that uh, in this chamber, uh, in committee in particular. We've been through uh, one false start with this particular property as we uh, wound up kind of caught in a transition at the level of state government. Uh, but I know uh, many parties throughout Nashville interested in preservation are interested in possibilities to ensure uh, you know, preservation that goes to a greater level than, than some bricks and some plaques. I think uh, it behooves us to be potentially more serious about the, the ultimate design of whatever goes on this site if it is in the stewardship of either Metro Nashville or Metro Schools. Uh, and I will be continuing to work uh, with Mr. Jamison and others on that project if we approve this. Um, I would like to move approval. I guess I already had my brief comment, sorry. All right, that's okay. So there is a motion to approve, we're on 1606, properly seconded. Uh, discussion, Council Member Bedney. Yeah, uh, so 
you guys may know by now that I have a degree in architecture. I work for a big firm called Harfield and Roberts, and I was the lead designer on the Howard office building. When we started working on that project, it was a requirement of the program to preserve the facade and the part of the building that face Second Avenue. So if you go there today, you'll see that that portion is there. So there is a way to preserve buildings, which is to make it part of the program uh, to do so. Now, we don't have the power to tell the school system how to manage or how to uh, design their buildings unless we set up some kind of a guideline for the whole city. But I don't, I don't know that there is any way that we can influence the program phase of the design. So for me, uh, although I have been, I have a record of pushing to build more schools in Nashville, sometimes even against the desires of my fellow council members, because I believe that we are short on capacity. We need more uh, classrooms in the city to, to stop having all these portables. And I'm a big fan of the Nashville School of the Arts, and I believe it should be at that location. I also think that if we as a city uh, uh, get into the business of demolishing buildings that we own, we are setting a bad precedent. We are basically telling the private sector that we are okay with demolishing our own buildings. So we really don't have any moral authority to tell you not to demolish your building. So I'm going to vote against this, even though it breaks my heart because I, I'd love to see that building there. I'd like to see more capacity in our school system. But from a historic perspective, uh, I just can't bring myself to do it. And obviously, the only person that can put a building on the register is the owner. So if the state didn't choose to put it on the register till today, that shouldn't prevent us from knowing that that building could be eligible to be on the register if we own the building. So uh, I just can't, uh, on good conscience, vote for this. I'm going to vote against it. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was looking at the uh, analysis or the attachment for this, and is the total acreage 2.59 acres? It said improved property and 2.59 acres, and I just wanted to know what the the entire acreage was, please. Can the administration answer that, please? I, I believe what we heard in budget and finance, and I apologize, Mr. President, for jumping in here, was that it is uh, the total site, if you include uh, an MDHA adjacent parcel, which they will have access to, is just over five acres. That's correct. And is there any costs to Metro government for the adjacent MDHA? No, MDHA is transferring that property free to us. Okay. And so we are paying $11 million then for these 2.59 acres? I believe that's correct. Yes, ma'am. So 4.25 million per acre at this location. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank it's you. appraised at 11 million eight, and we're getting it for 11.3, so we're getting it $500,000 less than the appraised value. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Cooper. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just wanted to say I've been listening to Councilman O'Connell's misgivings but support and then also our planning committee chairman's even stronger misgivings and I just wanted to thank um, Councilmember Bednay for his comments and, and say he has persuaded me and I also will vote no. Okay. Thank not, you, not that it's, we don't want it, but it's such a terrible precedent for development in Nashville. All right. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. So I, I mentioned this in committee, and I'll mention it here as well, but I'm going to add something onto it as well. Um, so right now, I believe, from what we learned in committee, we have until June 1st, because we've got an extension, and if we don't act as Metro, then the state can do as it likes. And what we were told by MMPS and committee, and planning committee, was it is unlikely we will get another extension, because we've gotten several already. So this is kind of... Per probably, as we were told, the last bite at the apple for this property. So at its basis sort of exchange, this is a vote as to whether you feel better about this property being in Metro's hands or you feel better about this property being in the state's hands where the state can sell it to anyone. They can sell it to a developer. They can do whatever they like with it 
And we have no say, we have zero say over what happened. What we didn't discuss in committee is how this impacts other properties. So we discussed a little bit about the National School of the Arts is currently on the TPS site off Foster Avenue, which is in District 17. That site, as we have discussed previously, is woefully inadequate, uh, the current structure for NSA. In my conversations with, with uh, teachers and administrators over there, they want to be closer to downtown because they want to be closer to the amenities, to the cultural and musical um, amenities that are downtown that their students can take advantage of. The last piece about this is, if it doesn't go here, it's got to go somewhere. So MMPS has to start looking at other pieces of property that they already own to place this school. And when they have to start thinking through that and they feel that the TPS site is inadequate, then they have to look at what other parcels they have. And one of the parcels that's sitting smack dab in the middle of all this is the parcel that we voted to take out of the budget last year, which is the Merle School property. And I can tell you that if we don't go through with the plan that we talked about and have budgeted for over the last couple years, it puts that property back in play. And I don't blame anybody at MMPS for that. But it puts it back in play a parcel that we took out and said, hey, this is an important parcel to the community around it and for what it was for the William Edmondson home site. And the community has spent the last year planning on that site, presented a community plan to members of the administration, the members of the planning department just last week, and is working toward the potential for having a master plan process that will create all the things that we just said we wanted to do standing here 12 months ago. If we don't go through with the things that we said, hey, we're going to budget for two years ago, and this is the proper site, we open more than just one site. We open a bunch of sites. And I just ask members to consider that. I understand the importance of the current facility at 88 Hermitage, but what we do affects more than just one property. And I don't want us to come back and say, well, what happened six months later? Because we'll know what happened because our actions tonight will have influenced it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. <clears throat> Council Member Elrod. Previous question. So there's a uh, move for the previous question, properly seconded. We're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of voting on the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We're on, um, we're voting on BL 2019-1606. Um, let's see, clear the board. Uh, so we're going to go on the board, uh, BL 2019-1606 authorizes Metro government to purchase property from the state of Tennessee located at 88 Hermitage Avenue. It needs uh, 21 votes to prevail. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would, uh, open up the machines. Madam Clerk, close machines, take the vote. 17 in favor, six against, eight abstentions. Uh, so uh, BL 2019-1606 fails, needed 21 votes. BL 2019-1607 uh, by Council Member Pulley and Syracuse relinquishes Metro government's further interest in a parcel of real estate formerly comprising part of the Green Hills Branch Library and Archives. Council Member Pooley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, Parks and Library, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Parks, Library and Arts approved 7-4-0 against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member Pooley. Uh, move approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading, BL 2019-1607. Proper motion, proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, 1607 is adopted on third reading. Bill 2019-1608 by Council Members Allen, Bedney, and others. 
abandons portion of alley number 952 and alley number 970 right of way. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, move approval. Okay, all the committee reports are in. I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading 1608. BL 2019-1609 by Council Member Bedney. Uh, abandons alley number 1144 right of way in easement. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Move to approve. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading, 1609. Bill 2019, 1610 by Council Member Bedney, O'Connell and Hager. Uh, abandons a portion of Bighorn Drive right of way. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to approve the legislation. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Let me remind you that um, tomorrow uh, Mr. Cardwell will lie in state beginning at 9.30, 9.30 to 6. Uh, the program to um, uh, accept the body is at 9.15. It will be at the Horseshoe. Um, um, if you can come, um, I would ask that you please try to attend. Council Member Vircher, for what reason? Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I just want to take this time to let Budget and Finance Committee know, members know and council members know we will be back here tomorrow for budget hearings uh, beginning at 4 o'clock. We will begin with parks. We have budget hearings um, both Wednesday and Thursday, and also we have an additional MMPS meeting on, on May 29th. And um, additional correspondence will be going out with, with other deadlines as well. But the important is that to let council member and budget um, finance committee members know we are here tomorrow. All right, thank you, Council Member Vircher. Uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn, properly second. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, we are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.